Hello everyone and welcome to Live CTF. We're gonna this is our audio check for our live stream. Hopefully you guys can hear us. Let us know in the chat if you can. I'm Cyphertex or Jordan. I'm gonna be one of the commentators this weekend, and with me is Carl. Hi, I'm Carl or Zeta2. Uh, we'll be commentating here with Jordan. And uh, yeah, glad to be here. I'm okay. I'm I hope it this is yeah, we put a lot of work in. This has been uh, a lot of stress, but uh, we're starting. I think everything's working. We're looking forward to uh, to seeing the teams compete. So before we kind of get into the meat of it, let's, let's talk a little bit about like the history, what this event is, what we're doing, uh, what we're hoping to see from the teams. So you know, Live CTF as a concept has existed for quite some time. Hey, Triple Six, we see you in there and in the chat. Yeah, definitely let us know if you're doing this. Uh, we're gonna have to bring the camera in if we get too many jokesters behind us. Um, <laughs> it is DEF CON, so we're gonna, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. gonna get that. Um, Live CTF uh, has been around as a kind of as a name. Uh, GeoHot started several years ago. Uh, it was streaming on Twitch and did a couple of these kind of like live. He was playing capture flight challenges and wanted other people to see him doing it and kind of interact. Uh, sort of early live streaming stuff. There was a couple of different, I guess, experiments or attempts. Uh, I did one a couple of years ago at DefCon Finals where I messed up the audio and it wasn't live and recorded it and it was it was a bit of a bummer. So like we've had. Uh, a couple examples of that, and then you also were running pony racing, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we did for a year. We run a monthly uh, uh, like live CTF show on on YouTube, where we had four contestants uh, trying to solve the same challenge uh, head to head, and like doing commentary on top of that uh, was uh, pretty popular, actually. Uh, a yeah. lot of people like it. it's a, it's a lot of work, though. I think people don't uh, they underestimate how hard it is to kind of get it. So let's let's talk a little bit about like the kind of what we it is. When we talk about live CTF, right? Obviously capture the flag. We're talking about a hacking challenges. There's a variety of different, you know, CTF out there with different uh, scoreboard and structure. And so when we say live CTF, we're specifically saying a small group of people going head to head on the exact same challenge and in particular we're watching them. We want to see what they're doing. That's what makes live CTF really interesting. Yeah. And this is exciting because we're bringing live CTF to DEF CON CTF finals. So certainly one of the premier capture the flag contests is DEF CON CTF. It's one of the, I think it is the oldest, uh, certainly continually running capture the flag event. This is DEF CON 30. I think, I mean, they've had DEF CON CTF 
I, I came in DEF CON 9 21 years ago, and there was the CTF was already an established thing. Like it's been around for many years. And uh, the idea is that we are going to have all the, the teams that are here, they're playing DEF CON CTF. So to be clear, the CTF as a whole is going on around us. Nautilus Institute is running the DEF CON CTF. We are like a little side piece in kind of inside of that, right? And so this is a part of the whole event. If the teams do well here, it will add to their score for the final event. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're trying to add some, uh, like a little bit of a twist, a little bit of spice to the competition, like uh, uh, bring that excitement and also to uh, make this accessible to uh, the viewers and, and see a little bit of what's going on and like the minds and computers of these uh, it, participants. Usually, if you've ever been to DEF CON before and you've walked through the CTF room, Nobody wants you to look what they're doing because competitors will cheat and yeah. spy on like one another. And it's, it's you know, so they're all kind of like closed in and it's not really spectator friendly. Last several years, teams have worked on cool visualizations and so we've got one kind of going on over here. There's a 3D visualization from Nautilus that's tracking their scoreboard. Uh, AR, if you're talking about the DEF CON CTS scoreboard, unfortunately, no, I don't actually think we've asked uh, Nautilus. There is no public scoreboard right now for the main event. We can give you updates uh, throughout the event uh, right now. So actually, at the end of this broadcast, before we, we turn over to our next one, if we had a little bit of time, we'll actually let you know what the latest scores are. Um, otherwise, find a friend who's at DEF CON and have them come in here and take a picture. Uh, I, I don't know if, yeah, what the plan is on their scoreboard. The live CTF portion, you'll see when we go back to like our kind of intermission screens, you'll see the brackets. So what live CTF is going to be, yeah, actually, Carl, what do you tell them about like, the structure of like what that bracket is and how that's going to work? Yeah, exactly. So we're playing this as a uh, traditional uh, single elimination knockout tournament. So there will be, uh, so we have 16 teams uh, in the in the DEF CON CTF. So uh, we're starting with the uh, round of 16 uh, today. We will have uh, four matches and then we'll continue uh, tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, the teams, there will be one player from each team uh, sitting at these uh, tables behind us. Okay, right behind um, us. With one computer. They are not allowed to communicate with their teammates. They will be uh, wearing uh, earmuffs uh, to block out uh, our uh, commentary. And uh, they both get the same uh, CTF challenge uh, at the same time. And the first one to solve it uh, wins. The other team is eliminated. The winners advance to the next round. And uh, in the end, we will have uh, a winner of this tournament. And, and then- And each round like, what, like gets them points, right? Yeah, exactly. So the, depending on how far they make it in this tournament, this will then add to their scores of the, the whole like DEF CON uh, CTF. Uh, DEF CON, I mean, the DEF CON CTF is an attack defense CTF, so you have like different um, aspects of the scoring. You typically have like for attacking and for defending and stuff. So this will be like another uh, dimension to the scoring yeah. uh, of this event. Yeah, in fact, that actually informed kind of the, how the points were worked as Nautilus and, and we were talking about kind of the design of the game. The goal is we want this to be Something teams take seriously. We want them to send their best person. We want them to really want to win and do well because it will benefit them in the game, but also not disrupt the whole game if one team does well here and um, another team does well. In the, you know, like We don't want to throw it off too much, right? Yeah. So kind of finding that balance is, is tricky. Uh, I like what Nautilus has done. I think it's going to get us that. Uh, and the other thing to point out is the teams, we're going to have a lot of work. We have a lot of work cut out for us. We're going to have 15 total matches throughout the next uh, three days, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. But the teams have a maximum of four events that they're in, right? Because there's only four rounds to go from 16 to eight to four to two to one. And so the teams are out at most four hours for if they get first or second place. Yeah. And in fact, the teams that like don't get any points, they're done and gone and they can go back to the, the, the focusing the other events. So we hope to not like disrupt too much of the normal flow of what, of, of what teams are doing. Yeah, right? and we, we hope with the, the teams, like we have, we've talked a little bit to the teams and we've heard, uh, like some people, they you know, find this, uh, you know, a bit nervous, like being live on camera. It's stressful. Uh, it is. So, so, but we still like hope to make this like a, an enjoyable experience for both the participants and for all of, all of you viewers as well. Yeah. So one of the again, we said earlier, you know, DefCon is is not accessible to a large extent. You have to already be in the CTF community. You have to already be very active to even compete at the qualification round to make it here. And so we're hoping by having uh, challenges here that are a little bit more accessible, uh, you'll be able to follow along, you'll be able to see kind of what they're doing on a smaller scale. Yeah. And so speaking of that, let's talk a little about the challenges themselves and how they differ maybe from the challenges that are going to be happening for the rest of the CTF. Right, so I mean, normally in a CTF, uh, a challenge can, I mean, the, you can have the varying difficulty of your challenges, right? But uh, especially in a top tier competition such as DEF CON, you typically have pretty difficult uh, challenges. It can take uh, many hours to 
uh, exploit these uh, systems, but we are aiming to have matches here of about like 30 to 45 uh, minutes, which means that that also kind of puts some constraints on the, the difficulty of our challenges. Yeah. They cannot be too difficult. Uh, so we have had to like try to find that ba balance between, uh, you know, uh, not so trivial. It's like five minutes. You run one thing and you're done. Yeah. But also, it can't take too long. So hopefully we got it right. We'll find out as the weekend progresses. Yeah. And if we don't, like if the matches <laughs> yep. uh, are like if they go too long, we have uh, a sudden death uh, round thing where we have prepared some uh, very um, simple challenges that we will then switch out. So we will stop the normal challenge. They will get this sudden death challenge instead, and then it's really about being those, those are five minute yeah, challenges yeah, yeah. they're meant to be like very very straightforward and easy yeah hopefully we don't have to use them but if we do they're there and they're ready uh with the idea that that whether it's those or the normal ones the fastest team wins first person to solve it ends the ends that particular round and we set up for the next round and and, and start all over so in terms of the type of challenges now like the defcon qualification rounds you often have a mixture of web and forensics and net, all these different other things Finals, though, tends to be focused more on poning, right? And yeah, so is that poning, reversing, like that low-level uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, and so we've mirrored that as well. So if the teams were a little nervous about, like, well, wait a minute, I don't do a lot of web app sec, don't worry. Uh, we are keeping things in line, and in part because we want this to be representative of what the teams are doing now. Like, a little baby challenge is very similar to the style of challenge, if not the same difficulty, that they're doing in the final event. So you can get a sense of kind of what's going on at home as we follow along. And speaking of following along, if you are in chat, we are we are watching it, we're keeping an eye on it, we're happy to answer questions as we progress throughout the day. Uh, thanks earlier for uh, the, the question about the scoreboard. So just a quick update, I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. Uh, currently, there's only a, a couple hundred points separating first from last. So they yeah. all started around 1,600 points. Uh, it looks like this is going to be a zero-sum game. And so actually, one of the later streams, we might bring on one of the, the Nautilus folks and talk more about it if we have if we have time. Yeah. Um, and so we'll learn more about how they're doing it. But it, uh, zero sum game where teams lose points and then they go to other teams that gain it. So in other words, if I get exploited by another team, I lose some points in my in the form of my SLA because I didn't have a secure service, and they gain some points uh, that they've sort of taken from me. Yeah. And on, so yeah. On, on the topic of uh, like bringing in other people as well. So we will be on commentary uh, throughout the weekend, uh, but we're also hoping to uh, bring in some. Uh, other commentators, some uh, remote commentator as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, hopefully there will be a little bit of a, a mix here as well on the commentator Assuming table. Assuming we can figure out the logistics and the yep. streaming and everything is, is uh, the connectivity gods are working for us, we are going to, yeah, we will bring in a couple of folks that you will probably recognize if you do any online. We don't want to like promise yet until it works out, but we, we have some folks that, that I think you'll be excited to hear from and we're looking forward to having uh, join the commentary. Um, and so keep an eye on that for that. That'll probably be uh, uh, in tomorrow. Yeah, we have a question in chat here about uh, whether each round will have the same challenge or each match will be unique. So uh, each match will have a, a unique challenge. And this is because, because, of course, we are broadcasting this. So all the yeah. teams can watch uh, the other matches. And uh, in fact, that might be like a good idea to get like a feel for the type of challenges we are going for. Uh, so definitely we couldn't have the same uh, challenges for each match because then you could just copy the solution of the previous yeah, match. Yeah, the only way to do that would have been to sort of sequester and take all the people in any given round into a room, not yeah. let them out and let them one at a time. And that just was, we weren't going to waste people's time. Yeah. So instead we wasted our time and we made a lot more challenges. It would have been a lot easier if we only had to make four challenges. Uh, yeah. But by making 15 challenges, yes, different teams will get different challenges. We have actually told each team, though, the name of the challenge, which is sometimes actually a pretty good hint yeah. as to what kind of challenge it is. The category, whether it's uh, reversing or opponable. Today we have all ponables, and we have a mix of x86 and x64 binaries. I think there's one x86 32-bit. The rest are all 64-bit. Uh, 64, uh, 64 so that's the, the challenges we've got. I love seeing the team hype. Keep up, you know, yep. cheering on your favorite teams. That's exactly what we want to see. Yeah. Um, and so speaking of yep. uh, favorite uh, teams, I was, uh, maybe we should uh, just mention like a little bit about how they ended up here uh, as well, because. Uh, I said we're here at the DEFCON finals with the 16 teams. They had to uh, qualify uh, early this year. I think it was back in May or April uh, in a really tough uh, qualifiers. Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, yeah, the top 16. Uh, well, actually, you have uh, the winner of last year, 
uh, are pre-qualified for the uh, So, so in, in this case, it really was just the top 16 because yes. it happened to be? That yes, they because were that team was also playing the qualifiers. I, I, I think officially the, the previous team didn't this year as it was a clean break. When I talked to Nautilus, they said actually it turned, normally the team who won the previous year automatically gets a buy. They weren't sure about that. In the end, it didn't matter oh, because, okay. because the previous team qualified anyways. Um, but they were kind of treating it as a sort of fresh break. So actually what you're going to see in our bracket, uh, which, which actually we could pull up the bracket now um, and we can take a look at it. You'll see the way that the seeding has worked is the team who scored first place in the qualification event uh, is uh, battling against the 16th place team from the qualification event, right? And so throughout uh, these events, that's just kind of how we split things up. We chose a random order for which match uh, happens when. And uh, we're going to be putting, again, these kind of random challenges out so you'll see where your favorite teams are and kind of who they're battling um, as they make it through uh, through the rounds here uh, the weekend. Again, we're going to do four. So round one will take us down from the field of 16 to a field of eight. And we're going to do half of that round today. So we've got four rounds today. Tomorrow morning, uh, Pacific time at 10 a.m., we're going to do the second, uh, sorry, the next uh, four rounds. Uh, and at that point, we'll be into round two. No, sorry, matches. <laughs> we're going to, I yeah. got to be careful. So just to be clear, we have four rounds and each round will have the number of competitors. And then we're gonna have 15 matches. Yes. We had language. I'll probably get it wrong. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll correct each other yeah. if, if, if we do it. Um, but that's the that's the plan for uh, for this whole this, this whole event. So, uh, scoreboard update maybe, or do we get anything else? What what do we need? Um. Yeah. I think um, we're uh, that's uh, where we're at right now. With uh, as I said, like uh, pretty tight. I mean, the the DefCon CTF just kicked off. Uh, was like. A few hours ago, uh, about th uh, almost four hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's still early, uh, early days. Or, uh, three They're, hours ago, rather. Yeah. yeah. The the teams are within percentages of each other. So. But yeah. if you want to root on your favorite team, we'll do the top three. So we have Water Paddler in first with sixteen thousand two hundred and eighty-two points. Maple Mallard Magistrates, or as I plan to call them, uh, the Mighty Ducks, yes. because that name is really long. We're gonna have to come up with names for a lot of these teams. Uh, and in third place is Straw Hat, uh, tied fact, with, actually, yeah. Yeah, tied for a second, sorry, um, MMM and Straw Hat. Uh, and, and, and MMM, well, there's a lot of history in all these teams. We're going to talk more later. We're going to talk about, like, the split of them. Many of these teams, are actually, I think almost all of them are actually conglomerate teams. There's several teams that have come together. Again, speaks to the nature of this as, like, the, the hardest, biggest competition that several kind of elite teams come together yeah. to form a team to compete here. Multiple different collaboration teams here. Uh, just to give an example, you have Sour Cloud, which yep. is like a collection of all the German uh, CTF teams, uh, which they already have like really good uh, CTF teams. Individual teams, absolutely. Yeah. But then they, they you know bond together. This tells a little bit about like just how fierce the competition is at this uh, event. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to look forward for some of those. We've got nine minutes until first round. Let's go ahead and go back to our intermission. We're going to bring up our next uh, two teams, get them set, cross your fingers for the challenge. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the teams do, and we'll see you all in about nine minutes.
right, we are back, I hope. We'll find out. Uh, we're, we are going to count us in. We have our, our first two teams, uh, PTB, WTL, and Shellfish, battling in our first round of live CTF. Uh, we've got the screens up. They're here behind us. We're going to count them in in five, four, three, two, one. It's live. They're refreshing the page. Round of applause for live CTF. Okay, so now we'll watch and we'll see and make sure this is working. We're going to go ahead and bring up both their uh, screens and you can get a little sense of the layout that we're going to be using uh, for, for the event where you can actually see, see what, they're, what they're doing. Yes. Right? So uh, I, I see, I love the full screen terminals, right? Right, first thing we see. Yes. Uh, they've got a binary. We told them it's a pwnable binary. What was the name of this particular challenge? It's uh, uh, Sis Call Me Maybe, right? Sis Call Me Maybe. So we've got like a little meme reference, uh, call, me, call Me Maybe. Uh, we've also got a, a competitor webcam, which has just got the laptops. So you can't really see a whole lot on that. We'll probably uh, not use that particular view. Yeah. Um, but we can see uh, we've got IDA up and going. We've got uh, terminals. Okay. So let's take a deep breath. We can already see pretty straightforward. In fact, we've even got some symbols here, right, on this particular binaries. Yes. Um, and let's let's uh, we've got on the left we've got. Um, we have uh, Pony Bytes, uh, the, the PTB VTL right. uh, here, and we have Shellfish uh, on this side. On, on the They're right. They're both okay. using IDA for their uh, disassembly. Uh, I was hoping for, I did see Binger running. I noticed Binger was actually running. Yeah. I think they're prepared, knowing a Binger developer was one of the, the organizers, like, uh, in yeah. case there's something terrible that Binja does better at, we should, we should leave it up. Yes. Um, you see, it's a pretty small program here. You can see on the uh, shellfish, uh, there you could get a glance of the, the code where um, it's a pr program, it's reading in some uh, commands, uh, sorry, so arguments to uh, whatever syscall you want to make. And uh, yeah, then from then you can do this how many times you want, and then you from there you want to get code execution. So so the vulnerability is is there. This is actually more of a shell coding exercise than uh, a um, uh, like a you don't have to find the vulnerability. It literally will just run whatever syscall you want, and it's up to you to provide a, a series of syscalls. So like, can't I just like exec ve and run bash like immediately? Like why you know is that not a valid solution? Uh, yeah, I mean almost, except that you know to, to call uh, exec you need uh, a string of the of the program you're executing. So they first need to get that string into memory somehow, uh, but then it should be just smooth sailing from there. Yeah, and it, it's kind of ironic that like that we give them full syscalls, but they don't have the ability to just run shellcode, right? Mm, so yeah. because they don't have actual shellcode, little things like just put some bytes directly into a piece of memory is, is maybe a little bit trickier, uh, and so they're not going to be able to do that. Um, Let's talk about what, what what's their goal. What are they trying to do here to show that they've won? Right. So the, the, the goal of this uh, challenge, and most of the challenge actually, is to gain code execution on the remote system. And once you have that, there is a small program running, uh, sitting there that you can run to... Um, Let's go ahead and pick up Shellfish there, because I saw them running the, running the challenge. Right. So they've created kind of like a uh, template uh, in their ex uh, exploitation script where uh, they're just like setting up the interaction with the program, like uh, inputting the different parameters, just making sure that that works. And then once they have that in place, they can get kind of like make an abstraction on top of that and just make all the syscalls that they want. So they're just going to use like a pwn tools or something like that to be able to interact with a service, but then they're going to wrap that so that it's this syscall, this parameters, and it will handle the text formatting and the new lines and all that kind of stuff. Right. Just let them build their, build their primitives. And this is very common when you do this type of exploitation. You kind of like transform uh, functions in the program to like more abstracted uh, operations. Uh, and we had a question here in chat uh, if they have internet and they can Google and stuff. Yes, they do have access to internet. Actually, we can see it just now. So PDB uh, just pulled up uh, uh, a reference here. Um, so I think we're looking, uh, if, we, if we switched over in time, you're going to see them looking up syscall tables, which makes a lot of sense. That was actually what we did when we were, we were testing this as well, right? Yes. Um, in so fact, the first thing they're looking for is exec VE. Exactly as we said, oh, I want to just run exec VE, I'm going to run bin bash, and that's where you're going to first run into this, well, wait a minute, how do I actually get the string? It's As we like had uh, some of the Nautilus members and as we talked about this with some folks, yeah. everyone's first reaction is, oh, that's immediately trivial. And then you're like, yeah, but where, where do you get your string from? You've got to have a pointer to a string and so you've got to think a little bit about that. It's it's not super hard, yeah. Um, but you have to figure out how to get something into memory first. Uh, that's going to be the string that you're going to call. Yeah, we can see here for uh, Shellfish uh, some uh, debugging going on. Uh, there was some uh, GDB with the Jeff uh, extension. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan. Um, makes life a lot easier. 
Um, I'm trying to see exactly what's going on. They're trying to put some breakpoints somewhere, looking at the memory mapping. Yeah, okay. Uh, so they, they needed the base address there to, to put the breakpoint in the right place. Although there is a function in, in, in Jeff to, to automate that. But however, uh, you know, what's the function? There. Uh, it's uh, called like pi break, so they will like do relative to the. Oh, that's kind of handy. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, does does the math for you with the offsets? Yes. That's cool. Uh, there's uh, a lot of different nice uh, tricks uh, with with that uh, extension uh, framework. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit just about the teams too, yes, right? Yes. Because we've got again, we've got a lot of like these conglomeration teams, and so uh, briefly, and we'll, we'll try not to miss. So keep yeah, you keep an eye on the teams to make sure I'm not missing somebody like yeah. you know getting close. Um, but we've got Team Shellfish that has been around. It's one of the longest running CTF teams, uh, originally out of UCSB, but they've got kind of, I think, connections now a lot of different places. Uh, so so uh, Team Shellfish is, uh, is currently one of our battling teams. And PTB WTL is pwned the bites and wreck the line. Wreck the line. I was yeah. like, I don't remember that uh, one. Exactly. Both uh, Romanian teams, right? I believe yeah. so. I believe Mo so. I think they have. Uh, other members as well, but I think they're like primarily uh, Romanian based at least. And I think we do see that especially in the DEF CON where the teams are like these mega groups are coming. Yeah. Sometimes they're just colleges or friends or online communities and sometimes they are just local, regional or you know country CTF teams that normally compete against each other. Yeah. And then they come together to form like a mega group and so yeah. you got like this sort of country you know based representation. Yes. Which also says something about that kind of like the you know CTF uh, community uh, aspect of, of the whole thing. I think it's uh, really nice to see these like different like regional communities like gather together. You're both competing against and yeah. also participating with. Yeah. Um, we're losing video on one of our capsules. We're not sure. Is it losing on the stream as well, or are we okay? So I apologize for the for the flicker. We've got some probably loose cable somewhere. Yeah. Um, this is the the joys, but. Uh, Technically, um, you know, could be a lot worse. Like, yeah. it is, it appears to be working, and so that's our big, our big stress here. So I saw some. Was it like S trace output or something from uh, from the PTB uh, screen there? Uh, not sure. Okay, so okay, I like that. So looking, at, I love that we're seeing the highlights, right? So M map. We started with exec VE. Yes, that's going to be your ultimate goal. Is you're probably going to want to trigger exec VE, but like you've got to get your memory first, and so we're seeing like. Um, Someone's looking, you know, we're going to look for, for MMAP to try to get, get something into memory, get a piece of memory that we control. But they're going to have to still get something into that region, right? They're still going to have to actually get bytes at that address. So yes. that'll I seems, I'm seeing some very interesting thing uh, here on the Shellfish side. They're grabbing the address of the vSyscall memory region, uh, which was not involved in any of the proposed solutions when we were testing I this. I love it. So I really would like to see what, what's, what they're going for there. Um, and, well, and, and to be clear, we expect that there will be lots, that this one in particular has an infinite number of solutions, right? There's going to be all sorts of ways that we didn't think about, so we have one in mind that we, we expected, but um, I'm actually, one of the things that I think is the most fun as an organizer is when somebody solves your challenge in a way that you completely did not expect. Yeah, yeah. As long as, as, long as it's not like, so in this particular case, we're okay if they solve it quickly, because that's the point, is to be as fast as possible. Sometimes if you build a really difficult, hard CTF challenge and somebody like finds a trivial thing that you mm. forgot, that's that's a little soul crushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, like as long as it's like a you know a cool solution or like anything, then then you just love to see it. Yeah. Although it's sometimes you'll, uh, I love how CTF organizers will re-release a challenge, mm. right? Patch the easy bug you didn't yeah. intend, give them points still, but then make them solve it in the, like the harder way as well too. So I think that's a decent trend and one one good way to yeah um just get both out of it to reward them for what they did, but but also keep doing that. So we have. Uh oh, so we've got something happening here. So we've got an MMAP syscall. Okay, so we're looking at PTB, uh, and we've got MMAP. So we've got our syscall wrapper. We're going to call the syscall by name. So the MMAP syscall, what are, we, what are we doing with that? We know we're going to, is like VE is going to run something, but what's MMAP going to do that's going to help us? Yes, so uh, we need to put the string somewhere in memory. We don't know anything about where, what memory is mapped and so on. So we'll just map, we'll use the MMAP thing. Okay, and we do, uh, we didn't mention this earlier, I don't think, but the output of the syscall you ran is returned like to the, the user. Like the return value. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so if, there, if there is a return from that syscall, they're going to get that information back. So any of these syscalls that that's useful, we're going to see yeah. that. So we had a comment, uh, sorry, question here about what happens if they don't solve the challenge in one hour. So even before that, I think it's like 45 minutes or so. Sometime around uh, 45 minutes. Yes, if they don't, we will switch to a uh, sudden death challenge, which is a 
very simple challenge uh, that uh, they will try to solve instead. So we will just like discard all the stuff they did so far and we'll switch to like a super, super simple challenge. And, and mainly the reason that we're going to do that is just because we've got so many matches that we have to run that if they each start taking longer and longer and we're off schedule, we're keeping people overnight and we got it, it would just be kind of a logistical headache. So we hope we don't have to. If uh, we don't have any bugs in our challenges and they're all the appropriate difficulty and the teams all do well, you'll never see them. We'll save them for next year. Um, but uh, those are like going to be like really, really simple ones that we hope they can solve within less than five or ten minutes. So that's kind of the backup plan. Uh, we'll find out if we need it. I have to say, so far, right on pace. Super happy with this. This is, like I think, about what I would have hoped and expected um, that we're seeing. They've already got their frameworks up. They know exactly what they have to do. Yes, yes. They're just building the right building blocks to kind of kind of see it. Yeah. And this is also, I think, something that's always uh, kind of a challenge uh, for me when, when solving these kind of challenges. Like, uh, how much do you want like to take the time and like build the proper abstractions and like make your nice functions, and and how much do you kind of just want to like you know take that leap of faith and just throw together some like uh, really uh, crappy code that might solve the thing? Like that might work, but if it doesn't, then you have to like backtrack and yeah. it was like it's a whole mess. There's, I feel like there's a lot of game theory to it almost in terms of like you know uh, risk reward explore exploit yeah. uh, kind of kind of analysis where it's you have to figure out is this uh, is, is it worth it? And you don't really know. You do develop, I think, a little bit of an intuition. Like, you can kind of look at it, you sort of have a sense of like, okay, no, I just need to bang this out uh, and just hard code a bunch of bytes and that'll be fine. Uh, in this particular case, oh, here we go. This is interesting. So now we've got a read syscall. This is, oh, we also saw the syscall list on the other side with Shellfish, but, but P2B, um, I think we have all the syscalls we need. I think, I think. Read, MMAP, X, yeah, exactly. So I, I think this is it. This is, these are the right ingredients. They just gotta assemble them correctly and yeah, bake that cake. Please. Yeah, yeah, and then we should be we, we may be looking at a winner, but um, we'll also keep an eye on shellfish and see see what's happening uh, uh, there as well, uh, and make sure that uh, yeah. So they're using the f x x v uh, function, which I that variant I'm not. I don't know. I'm I'd not, have to look at the main page yeah, myself. Yeah, I, I mean because the, these functions they come in a bunch of different flavors. Uh, yeah. Right. Ah, uh, so that's and, interesting. And, and again, there is, there is. Uh, I think one of the things the teams are going to realize is that we didn't go for tricks. Mm. We didn't. Tr we tried not to go for sort of like tricky, gimmicky things. It's tried to be like pretty straightforward. Yeah. We want them to be fast and quick, and sort of the obvious thing you would think of is at least our intended solution. Oftentimes, that's that's not always the case. Lots of CTFs, right? You've got to find the the very tricky uh, thing, and that makes it fun. It actually is super entertaining. Yeah. Um, Something you can also learn stuff from, like it exactly. sends you down this rabbit hole of research and stuff. But oh, you don't man. really have time for that, like right? No, so like Punable.kr or you know, like those websites have amazing, really cool things you can learn. Uh, but here, we're not trying to trick them. Um, yeah, no, no, no Ghidra users yet. Uh, I have seen a couple of the uh, participants in the room using Ghidra. So yeah, uh, maybe it, we should keep a, like a tally throughout the tournament. Like you know, it might be too <laughs> depressing for me. That might hurt my <laughs> my binge of soul. Might be too uh, too hurt by that. Yeah. So so uh, for those who are not aware, uh, uh, Jordan, one of the founders of Vector Thirty Five, making uh, Binary Ninja, which is not used in this match, but we hopefully will see it. Uh, I hope we see. And if, yeah. if all I want is one binge user <laughs> to win one round, and that'll make my half, make yeah. my heart happy, right? Go straight into the marketing material. Right I there. mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's, I, I will say, you know, the funny thing is, Binary Ninja was actually designed for CTFs originally. It was mm. meant to be very, very fast and quick, and like to, to common things like patching things out yeah. were meant to be quick, so that's probably kind of some of the things it does well. So it is actually well suited towards a very, very fast paced environment. Yeah. But more important than that is knowing what you're doing. All right, so back to so Shellfish, what are you seeing? So Shellfish, uh, they are creating, they writing a small C uh, program here. Uh, we're calling MMAP. Yeah, I think they're testing out. They're, they're maybe like. I like that idea. Not completely sure about uh, like the arguments or so for the MMAP. So they write, they're writing a small little test program to just verify that they have like the correct understanding of the situation. That's actually a really, really good idea. Very good idea. Yeah, because you know you don't want to like you have the added complication of a network service and the text protocol and you're throwing script in your wrapper. No, no, just get rid of that abstraction. Test the syscalls in a row directly, and then once you've got it working, then you can sort of port it to your throwing framework. I, I think that's a great idea, so I'm, yes. I'm happy to see that. Uh, but we are seeing, so we're seeing just the straight up approach over here on um, PTB uh, WTL. Let's watch them as they've got it. 
Yeah. Looking um, through. Yes. Is it uh, is it buffered? Is input buffered or not? Uh, they're checking that. Maybe they're looking for another piece of memory. Uh, they're looking over here in like the data uh, segment. So I wonder if they're looking for a place to reuse. But this is ASLR, right? We didn't. I don't think we gave them uh, information about where the binary is exe ex executing here. Because uh, it is kind of up to them to sort of like make their own memory with the syscalls that they've got. Yeah, we can see here, um, going over to uh, Shellfish again, uh, they are putting this together as the MMAP syscall uh, now. And uh, yeah, I think, are they like slightly behind the P2B at the moment? It's, like, uh, you know, it's so hard to say though. Yeah. I, having done, you know, we've both done, I think several versions of these kind of events and it can be really tough. Sometimes you think somebody's like not even close and all of a sudden before you notice, right. they've solved it. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you can see them kind of kind of bringing it home. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, Nick, uh, I'm, I'm Jordan. Hi, CypherText on Twitter the Vector35 Binary Ninja guy. Uh, and David, we have thousands of Binary Ninja users. There are, there are many thousands of Binary Ninja users. Um, yeah. We'll see how many are here besides the one that we have from PTB, even though they're not using it. Maybe they just ran it just to like, as a show of solidarity yeah. for me to make me feel I mean, better. I, I'm a Binary Ninja user. There we go, there are, there are <laughs> yes, there are Binary Ninja users. Yeah, but uh, anyway, looking at the, the, the PTB uh, screen here, I uh, think uh, you can see that they're debugging the read uh, the calls here, right? No, sorry, that's the input reading uh, routine. Uh, and they are doing the syscall zero, which is, uh, is that the read? Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, checking out some documentation about MMAP, Stack Overflow, always trustworthy. But we have uh, Shellfish. Again, yeah, uh, fixing the, uh, and map. Uh, ah, okay. So do, do PTB just found map fixed. So what they were looking oh, for yeah. is they wanted to get the right flag to be able to pass to MMAP to request a fixed address. So you can there's, there's different modes of MMAP. You can request memory and just take whatever you can get. Or you can just say, no, no, I want this address. Please give me this address. Yeah. And so they're just going to hard code some, some address that they hope nothing runs against. And this right? is kind of like a key to the challenge, right? Where uh, since... Uh, well, not necessarily, since you do get the return They get address, the return address, address yeah. so but they could, slightly but... slightly simpler variant is to just to tell MMAP, like, no, we're going to allocate it, at this it's address. It's one less moving part yes. to worry about. Um, so, yeah I, yeah, I think you can go kind of either way. And this is, so this is, we're about 20 minutes in. This is where I think we'd be evaluating, are we going to give a hint? And I don't think they need any hints. They, no, no, they no, both no. really know, yes. I think, uh, generally what the shape of the problem is. Um, they're both working on it. I'm, I have every confidence that they're gonna. I think they're gonna finish it out in the next uh, 20, you know, 10, 20 minutes. Yes. We hope. We hope. We're looking forward to to, to seeing them do that. Yeah. All right. So we, uh, we forgot to bring our water bottles over here to to make sure we can stay hydrated. Uh, but we'll yeah, uh, we'll yeah. do that. We're having to. Not only are we are we yelling over the uh, the house audio, uh, yeah. but we have our masks on and. Uh, it, there there have been easier streaming environments, but I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. So uh, going over to uh, P2B uh, again. Um, well, and, and so yeah, I think we mentioned this before, but right, like this Sol script they're running, they're running locally. They got the binary locally. They're running it in debugger, so they can analyze both halves of it. And then once they have it working, yeah, then they're going to go ahead and throw it against the real server remotely, which is like standard operating procedure. I feel like for these kind of challenges, standard right? Standard phoneable challenge. <laughs> exactly, and that's that's also why it's nice to have. Um, it's, it's nice to actually have like an environment where you can run it directly, right? Whether it's the architecture you've got or the um, operating system. Yes. Teams were a little worried about having internet. And we're like, no, 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 we want to see you in like internet. And remember, these are some of the best teams in the world and they're still looking this stuff up. We all are, are, are doing that. Let's take a look over here at uh, Shellfish again and see where we're at. Yeah, so they have another syscall that they're setting up. You see uh, them like, uh, well, retrying that. So they, they're uh, really making sure that the interaction uh, here is working. You have this like question from the programmer, like, do you want to make another syscall? So they're just setting that up uh, to answer yes on that. And then you see they're about to set up another syscall. Uh, oh, there we go. So we're looking at memory maps over on uh, PTB. So they briefly, they tried to allocate the memory. Mm -hmm. They went to look at, in the debugger and to yeah. see if the memory was allocated. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing, I mean, if, if, if they're past that step, the only thing left to do then is going to be to actually put bin bash there, right? Like once they have the string bin bash into that location, 
uh, they they should be able to win. They should should be able to, yeah. Uh, we have a question in chat about if the challenges are going to be released to everyone after the finals. Uh, I mean, we haven't really talked about that, but I mean, in principle, I assume should, so. Yeah, yes, like, I don't know. Yeah. Is anything stopping us from doing that? So uh, I'm gonna say yes on that. Provisionally, yes. Yeah, yes. we'll double check with. So now's actually a good time to talk about if you keep an eye on, make sure we're uh, we're getting a little close over here on PTB. So so Carl, if you watch that, uh, but we do have a lot of people who've been helping out so far. So there are three of us in person here at Vegas that are doing all like this kind of stuff. Um, but we've had several other people contribute challenges remotely, uh, test challenges, uh, do a lot of stuff. We're looking real close over here. Okay, so again, we've got our read, uh, we've got an exec, we've got our MMAP. This might actually be it. So let's take a look and follow along PTB uh, because I'm, I'm smelling blood in the water. I think if there was... Yeah, so they like, Maybe they need to fix like some small thing here. Uh, oh yeah, is that they have some helper function there? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know really what it's. it's it was like an interactive. Is, is it? Oh, is that? Is it? Is it? Oh, they're they're solving it. There's That's it. That's it. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? It's going. What? What? We already had it. Oh, oh my God! You weren't even looking at the right screen. Congratulations! <laughs> wow, that was so close. That was so close. Okay. Um, well done. I can't believe how close that was. All right. Oh my God. Okay. So that uh, was outrageous. Yes. Uh, give me. Also, uh, I will go over to the players. You uh, talk to the players. Take it over here. All right. Uh, the, uh, yes. <laughs> that was unbelievable. I was. I, we even predicted. We said we're gonna miss one. Yeah. We're looking the wrong way. All right. So let's do a real quick recap. So we were. With the, between the screen kind of turning on and off a little bit on the shelf of shy, we were a little behind. I mean, that was like seconds. They were seconds away. That was unbelievable. What a great finish. Um, so just as a quick recap, perfect timing, super exciting, very well done to both of those teams. That was so close, so close. Um, so again, once they were able to like get their shell, all they had to do was run their script put their team number in from the page that told them what they had done. I'm happy we saw all of our infrastructure working, uh, the overlay when we got a winner. Uh, congratulations to Team Shellfish, but man, well played PTB. That was so close. Uh, really, really well done. We're gonna let them go back to their, uh, their teams and keep working on the rest of the challenges here. We'll see if we can figure out how to turn off the, the winner script um, and, uh, and get back to the stream. We will, uh, we're gonna leave the stream going, so keep watching here. But remember, just on the hour, every hour, uh, our goal, we're gonna have a new round, and so we're gonna get set up, we're gonna get the next team, uh, and then we'll update our bracket now. We have our first winner. Congratulations to Team Shellfish. Well done, very well done. Oh my God. That was so good. Oh my God. It was so good. Yeah. All right, that's at a high bar for, I think, the competition for the, the rest of the, the event, but what a way to kick it off. Uh, we're gonna leave you at the intermission. Uh, you can check out the scoreboard, and then we'll be back uh, in about 35 minutes uh, with the next round. Yep. See you later. Take care.
All right, and we're back. Uh, welcome everybody to round two of, or excuse me, round one, match two of live CTF here at DEFCON CTF. You can see Carl behind me instructing the competitors. Uh, our next two teams up are uh, team, I'm just going to call slashers, or slash, 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 because their official name is slash V, slash home, slash R, slash dot bin, slash TW. Uh, I believe it's a combination of Team Binja, Team Tokyo Westerns, uh, home, a, a, bunch of, a bunch of teams, and they've, they've combined themselves with like a, a path. So they're getting the instructions now on exactly what's going what's gonna, to what's gonna happen. Um, they're uh, hopefully about ready to go. You, you count it out. Count it out and make it live. And uh, let's go ahead and actually pull up both of their screens. We'll watch them start here. And uh, we'll, as soon as we get in the word that the server's live, they'll be able to refresh and start going on challenge number two. You go ahead and count it. Count it in. Count it in. All right, here we go. So we're going to go. All right, go. Go. Make it go. All right, we'll just do that. No countdown. No, no countdown this time. So we're going. Refresh the pages. We should be able to see them. There we go. Download challenge. Download challenge. OK. So not a uh, little, little, little less fanfare than last time. But hopefully we are going to be live. This challenge uh, is specifically called Open to Interpretation. We're not sure if all of our challenges are the right difficulty. What we are sure is they all have great no, names. No, you didn't. Sorry. Uh, this is the wrong one. You didn't replace the handout. Oh, oh okay. Go, go, oh, go tell them. Go tell them. Go to them. All right, sorry. Yeah. Technical glitch. All right. So we got to warn them that this is not the right challenge. One second. Okay. So this was still the old challenge. There's, there's a couple of like management scripts. This is our first time transitioning from an early round. So real short uh, intermission. And uh, we should be back. Uh, unfortunately, we're still seeing some I think we've done terrible things to the USB inputs on one of our laptops. And so uh, we're, we're, we keep restarting that capture card. Uh, we do actually have a spare capture card that's arriving uh, shortly as well. So we can, we can switch to that if this um, if ends up not working. So OK, we've told them to try again. They're going to download a new challenge. And let's take a look at uh, a new binary. All right, let's take a look at that. Challenge. It's just called challenge. We should have named the challenge the actual uh, challenge name. Yeah. In yeah, hindsight, you know, you, you learn all the lessons learned. All right. So we've got an Ida. Is this? Give me a program. Okay. All right. So we are on the right challenge now. Um, it looks like we're having some difficulty with our one capture card. Unfortunately, yeah. this one is problematic. We swapped out adapters, cards. We're, we're, we'll, we'll figure it out. We have backups for everything. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll have our production uh, look into that while we uh, continue the uh, commentary. And when we say production, we mean Glenn. Yes, we have we have. But you know, it sounds more professional when you oh, can no. say like <clears throat> production. Like yeah. we'll have we'll have backup house, yeah. the production crew look into it <laughs> and uh, let us know how it's going. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we've got uh, our second challenge. They're at least going. Um, uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, just um, team slash v slash whatever. Uh, look at their desktop while we've got that working. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, 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 we'll keep an eye on the other one so it comes back up. Yeah. Uh, we will see if, worst case, if we're not looking at one of the screens, we'll still see winner. So if we see winner and we didn't, just like last time, we were looking at the wrong one. Yes. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we should still be able to see uh, that that's happened. Uh, all the challenges will be available to download. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to release them. Uh, we don't have a specific plan, so we'll probably wait till just after we've recuperated a little bit, um, after we get back from DEF CON. Um, but we do plan to release them. Uh, I like uh, I like that you're guessing uh, about what type of challenge it might be. So it, open to interpretation. Is it a polyglot? Um, I think it's more of a, a play on words of interpreter. Yes. Yes. Right. As, uh, I think it's uh, uh, we're not that clever with the uh, you know uh, we're only moderately cl clever with the naming here, right? So uh, yeah, I think that's uh, something like this. Yes. So we can see here he see here um, looking at the looking at the uh, program in the item. And starting to uh, build up a uh, simple uh, phone tools script. Uh, what, so PTR lib, actually, I saw PTR lib. Um, that's a good question. I'm not actually sure the name of the individual players uh, that we've got. If you all saw a like home, uh, yeah, yeah, PTR. It is uh, PTR, uh, and that makes sense. That PTR lib. So this is their like their uh, throwing script library. So I think we're not looking at a 
uh, opponent tools. I think oh, we're looking oh, at an sorry. actual like custom. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's uh, always fun to there see. Yeah, yeah, from PTR Lib and for Star. I I see. Yeah, some uh, some uh, players prefer to like build their own little uh, thing. Uh, I mean, opponent tools has a million things, but it also it has a million things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's it, like get, getting that whole box of stuff when you only need like the screwdriver. Like, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's, there's certainly an argument. Uh, there's also Mpone, which is another nice one. Uh, it's, it's meant to be a little simpler, kind of more standalone. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so let's let's talk about the the, the problem. We can see um, this is explicitly, uh, I believe, uh, a custom situation. We've got a question mark and a. So we saw that yeah that that little switch statement there. Uh, again, with the name open to interpretation, and we think it's kind of like an interpreter. Yeah some sort of little virtual machine or some sort of interpreter that's going to make some some simple changes. Uh, I do love people people know this is like uh, a live CTF because they they start their throwing script like immediately, right? Yes, like yes. like they just immediately start uh, start building that up. Uh, so And I think that's also kind of a good way to um, in in a sense uh, document your understanding of the problem so far like writing down yeah. like the interactions like yeah. the different things and so you don't forget things and you kind of like yeah. as you like you often as you put to do's right like you know you do this part but like i need to do this later but yeah. at least i'll remember it cuz yeah. that's my yeah I, I think you're right i think people use their little uh, throwing script almost as a um, a stand in for like a you know like a notes yeah, uh, yeah exactly notes or task tracking or like right. doing we can see some debugging going on now as well um, we're, well, yeah, we're not going to interrupt uh, his his uh, his throwing. That's uh, you yeah. know, if, in the interest of, of fairness, um, we're not sure why we're we're having glitches on that our one capture, unfortunately. So we'll resolve it uh, before the next round. But we're not going to. Once we've started, we need to let him go until the yeah. first the first yeah, person Yeah, yeah, because this it, is so. so hectic. Like the margin, like as we saw in the previous <laughs> match for those who watched, like the yeah the seconds matter. It, it, absolutely. Like literally, there was like seven keystrokes, uh, but like. Between the play, I, I don't think we will see a tighter match. I, mean, I will we, be surprised. We can't see a tighter I, match. I, I would uh, be really surprised. Yeah, we would have to go down to like you know, mm. uh, recording. Yeah, and so exactly, we're seeing uh, Pwn DBG uh, instead of. Yeah, these. What is your preference on debugging libraries? Have you like Geff versus? So I used to be a uh, uh, Pwn debug uh, user, but I have switched to uh, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, long time ago, I was a, a Peta uh, user. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then uh, that kind of just stopped developing for a bit or something. Anyway, I switched to Pwn Debug, then I went to Jeff. Um, yeah, it's my current preference. So you can you can see I think just over uh, the shoulder here uh, some of the some of the players. So the the people in in chat that are wondering. Kind of depends on where we lean. If we're like, yeah, yeah. if we're, we're, we're letting him in, but we're also trying to kind of we have to block off uh, the their opponent's screen here, right? So because yeah. we have well, at least one of the one of the teams now uh, visible on our our little monitors right in front of us, um, and we've intentionally kind of like laid it out so that you can't see your opponent's you know uh, monitor over here that, that we're using to to see them. So we've kind of got them right. angled down a little bit lower. Um, yeah, yeah, honestly, they're all better than like stock GDB. Although, like oh. you know. TUI is not the worst thing. It's it's at least better. I feel like um, than than like you know stock command line. Yeah, I, I used mean, I used to just roll with like you know the display slash whatever mm -hmm. and like build up my own little kind of custom prompts. Yeah. But it I is think I never really learned that. I, I went like directly from the vanilla. Honestly, uh, that's the right choice. To, yeah, to, to a real tool. Yeah. To Jeff or yeah, yeah yeah one of those. Okay, so we're back in Ida, and it's interesting too because we started in, the, in in hex rays in the decompiler. Uh, and now we're just looking at actual offsets here, right? So we've got um, so some some kind of uh, overflow situation here going on. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, we've already so we already see somebody writing D's, yeah. uh, which were if we go back to that. Uh, uh, oh man! All right, you know what we might do? I might actually have if you go look over the shoulder and just to give us an update, come yes. back and give us an update and see how on the, uh, the, uh, on the Starbucks yes. side I and let us. If I knew, if I knew it was right, yeah. So, so you, yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll go. Yeah, you go check it out. Yeah, I'll go check it out. And then you can come back and give us a report and let us know yes. what kind of looks like where we're at. So, apologies for this. Um, this is going to be a wild and crazy weekend. We're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. So, hopefully, this is the the only real issue is we've got to figure out our why our capture card is is freaking out. We actually do have another capture card. We'll 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 bring in, uh, and we'll get working in the break. So, hopefully. Especially if this is a really fast match, uh, that'll be really easy. Uh, we will 
we'll bring this in. Okay, so yeah, there we go. We can see the uh, the switch statement um, with the different options. Question A, D, S, W, and we notice that there's some. Uh, yep, exactly. So there, there's uh, that comparison there, right? Was checking zero, was checking one twenty eight. Um, but you'll notice, I think this is actually why earlier uh, we saw uh, PTR looking uh, looking at the disassembly is because in um, hex rays you don't always see the signed. Is the comparison signed or unsigned, right? And so I, I suspect that's what we were seeing before is uh, the switch over to disassembly was saying, well, wait a minute, is this comparison signed, comparison or unsigned? Because I think you can mouse over the. The, With like a, a tool tip, the, the comparison uh, operator, and it will say uh, if I don't uh, misremember. Yeah, uh, but yes, it's still like to get the exact details, you might have to go down to the disassembly. I mean, you could use binary ninja. Oh right. And in high level IL, where yeah. it just it tells you signed or unsigned comparison, but I promise I okay, okay, I'll be good, <laughs> I'll be good. Uh, I won't do that, and I will say. Me with Binary Ninja would not beat these these folks with with IDA, right? So like I'm not claiming that uh, yeah. it would make me uh, infinitely better. Uh, so to give a bit of an update then on Starbucks, uh, yeah. it's actually very similar to the situation for uh, the what what, what do, how do we choose to pronounce the home Homer like yeah Homer bin uh, that's now what we call these. Um, I've I've been saying slash slash okay, slash 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 slash, 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 slash. Yeah, okay yeah. yes I, w however we however we do it yep yes uh, anyway so the uh, Starbucks uh, they were in a similar situation uh, they have like done some analysis they started out a small uh, exploit script not quite as fleshed out yet as as the one like they you know a, a bit shorter uh, doing some debugging looking at the, like registry values just making sure that they're completely understanding what's going on so they're. I would say at this point it seemed like they have fairly similar progress uh, between the players. Um, um, I, I I will say at least look at so I actually have not seen like an official solution for this one yet. So some of the challenges we wrote, some of them other of our teammates wrote, some of them we know the exploits and we tested them, and some of them we don't. Just knowing kind of generally what's what's going on here, uh, and looking at those comparisons, uh, I'm wondering where are I mean we're already this looks like intention. Right, yes, it yes. looks like we're seeing like I, I have an idea of what we're doing. We've already contacted like yeah, like this looks like really good progress. Only several minutes in, like if you had asked me now, do we need a hint? I'm gonna say like, doesn't look like it. Like you never really know. Yeah. Um, but you, you can see here they're doing a leak. Uh, you see this uh, uh, line starting with like libc base uh, if it's readable. So they are reading eight bytes out from the program and then they're subtracting the offset of the put char. Uh, address and then I uh, like a bit more as well. So from this, they're calculating the the base address of the libc uh, nice. of the libc um, library, uh, which then can be used to uh, calculate the addresses of other functions you might want, such as system, uh, which is maybe like the go-to. Usually, choice. usually yeah. the choice, right? And so, like you know, before uh, we were talking about exec ve for the syscall challenge, the last one, and that's just going to be the raw syscall. Uh, system's even better though, right? Yeah. Like, what's you know, what's the advantage of system over an exec VE? I mean, just so for for the system, you just give it like you give it one string argument, which is like the the, the thing you want to execute, uh, and that's it. You don't need to care about like uh, splitting up like the command line arguments into like an array or all that uh, stuff. It's just like I wonder if we'll see somebody's system straight to the payload, or if they're going to get a shell mm -hmm. first and then yeah. run to the payload. Like they could kind of go either way. On yeah, that, right? I mean personally. Even though this is again like, do you take it like slow and methodically, yeah, or and be able to like debug it along yeah. the way? Yeah. So I would just go for the shell, uh, because then the same solution also works out of the box locally uh, as well as remotely. Otherwise, they would. That's need true. To, well, uh, if you you get an error message, it would say file not found. Right, you would true, still see true. some sort of like bug uh, there. I would still feel more comfortable doing like launching a shell and then going with that. I uh, you know I think that's interesting because again though last round. Literally seconds mattered. If yes. one team went one way and one with the other, and they were that close, yes. the team that threw the the straight to the the submitter yes. would win. This so is correct. We will see. Um, we'll we'll see. I, I I don't expect it to match. Uh, or I yeah. don't expect it to be that close this time. There is like a small happen. catch to that though, because they don't know the like you need to an, an absolute address for exec right or. A, uh, exec VE does yeah. have to have the full path. Exactly, yeah. and because they don't know the current uh, where the current working directory, so they don't know the full path of the submitter. Right, but if they're calling system, in this case, if they're just finding system. Right, exactly. But I'm just. That's oh no no yeah true true you're right? correct yes right? like on, system, on this one you're right last round. Yeah, they could not have done that. They could have not done that nearly as easily. Right, no. but whereas this one. Yes. Uh, yeah, because because the relative pathing only works because of your shell essentially, which if you're going to call system, 
it's going to run the shell for you. Okay. Right. And and thank you for the for the the, the kind words. We appreciate it, Grandma Bullet. Uh, you guys in chat, we're we're definitely keeping an eye on it and happy if you guys have questions. Uh, and I expect y'all will be seeing stuff that we miss because we're kind of trying to like juggle around and look at a lot of different things. Uh, in fact, I even talked to one of the competitors in, uh, in the room watching the stream in the last round. Um, and he was like, why didn't they use the brakes this call? Why didn't they? They, they were all watching. Like, you know, they're, they're doing the regular CTF, but they were also, you know, checking out the competition, seeing what the challenges are looking like, wisely preparing for future rounds. Uh, and they were, they were, you know, commenting on better approaches. So I imagine we'll see, have people in chat here uh, that have feedback and have ideas on, yes. on things that they can do. I mean, you also should keep in mind that, like, this is... This is not your average uh, CTF environment. Do uh, we have it back? Oh, it's teasing us. No, yeah. It's we, teasing it's, us. Unfortunately, so this is not your average CTF environment, right? This is much more stressful for the players. Uh, like, uh, most of them are not used to, like, you know, live stream when they're playing And, and even if you are, even yeah. if you've done a lot of streaming, yeah. it, it still is harder. It's yeah. just 100% always harder. There's people watching, you're thinking, oh, did I clean up my desktop? Do I need to, like, right. is this my VM setup? Or, you know, there's just a lot more on your mind. And it's also kind of like an all or nothing situation, right? And a normal CTF, usually, uh, because we kind of moved away from the tradition of uh, first blood points. This is so true. Nowadays, it's all about total score, total exactly. number of solves. Exactly, and it doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter if you solve the challenge like five minutes into the competition or five, when it's five minutes left of the competition. Right. Uh, here, it's, it's everything. Like, either you win or you don't. Uh, we're get, we might be getting pretty close here because I am oh. seeing, uh, I did see, it looked like we had maybe even had a system leak or we're close to a system leak. Uh, so let's watch. So we're looking at system provider. So they've are, we've already got a convenient call. Again, there's a call to system already in the binary oh, and Starbug is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we go ahead and do another check, Carl, on, on Starbug. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, going to we'll go. Point with them. Uh, no, we don't actually worry about uh, past people learning things for new ones. Because, again, the challenges are totally different. Every match is a different challenge. Uh, exactly. So we, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, the general setup, well, the way that we would compensate by that is I will say we specifically put all the easiest things that we knew were easiest first um, just because we wanted to be guaranteed that they would get solved in time. So... The teams that go first had less information. They knew less about the environment and what was going to happen and maybe, uh, but it, I don't know. It, de it depends on the player. I think for some people going first is actually significantly better. You just get it out of the way and you're, you're kind of your nerves are over. And some people though, they really want to like see what's happening and know. So it's hard to say it was totally random selection in terms of which round happened when. Uh, so we'll see what it is. And yes, everyone not only has to use a laptop. So one of the differences uh, is that they're not only using a laptop, but we plug in our video capture cards, and those cards force uh, a specific aspect ratio so the font sizes can be a little bit off. So we are handicapping them unintentionally uh, a little bit that way as well, too. So how's it how's it going with Starbuck? Yeah, so uh, they have some good progress. I saw them looking in the debugger. I think they were looking at, like, uh, the GOT. Uh, so maybe a similar approach there with, like, overwriting uh, or leaking uh, addresses. Um, I mean, yeah. very fast to find the bug. I think both teams, right, pretty, I mean, again, this is meant to be an easy bug to find. It's even just wiring it all up, putting it all together, building the, building the payload. Yes, avoiding all the mistakes. Like, yeah. when you do these things, like, it, it's very unforgiving. Like, the, the smallest little, like, you, you, like, you're off by one somewhere and things just don't work. And, like, it, it, won't, it won't give you, like, any meaningful error messages or something like that, like, you know, as you would get when you're developing normal... Uh, software. I love that we're getting we're getting debug information. So we got a logger info. You know they're actually printing yeah. out their variables and stuff. Thank you uh, as a as a caster and as a or a commentator. It does make it easy when we can uh, you know see what your your intentions are and kind of and kind of yeah. what you're doing. I I also do like when I write my exploit scripts. I'm I'm definitely more like on the cautious and structured yeah. uh, side. Like. I name all my variables properly. I have like logging statements. Do you like put type, in, type hints? Do you actually put uh, Python three type hinting? Is that you that level of? No, it. That's has, a that's a bridge happened. too far for it CTF. Has happened. Okay. It has happened, but yeah. no, no, generally not. Well, as I am the opposite, I think by by nature, I was always quick and dirty, and I mean I wrote a lot of exploits with Bash. Like I would literally just shove raw bytes in with Bash, and like. If it works, it's faster, but when it fails, it fails miserably. Yes, and because you're, you're like way it, behind. when it yeah. fails. 
you have not it fails and you have not gained any ground like you're like it fails and you're kind of like still at, at zero while the slow and methodical like it can fail but yeah. it's like a very local and, and it's fail. easier to measure progress yes. potentially you can instrument a little bit better and see kind of where you're at yes but then it comes at this additional cost so I'm trying to see what they're doing. So there's a question here. Every team sends only one player. Yes, correct. So for each match, the, t the team chooses. So they will get to know uh, what type of challenge it is. So we might say, like, this is an x86 64-bit uh, uh, pwnable challenge. And uh, they choose a player to send. Uh, they do not have to pick the same player. If they win the match and advance to the next round, they yep. can swap out for another player. But for one, for the if, if we, for example, switched up the architecture or made it reverse engineering versus Ponable yeah, or yeah. you know whatever other things we did, uh, they have a chance to to swap it out. So it's supposed to be the best person from that team for that style of of challenge and for the stress of being on camera. Because some people are are maybe better exploiters, but really nervous about sitting in the room, which is it's a totally different experience. Yeah, and they are not allowed to get help from uh, their teammates. Yep, they can, but they can look on the internet. They can have all these resources. Although I don't think we've seen either one of these. They just they knew what they were doing. Yeah. They went straight yeah. in. They found the bug. They reverse engineered it, and they they're writing their exploits. Uh, but for example, the last one was a little bit different, where they were building syscall payloads, and so we did see both of them looking up, you know, a list of syscalls and the the parameters. Yeah. So if we have another look here and see uh, what they're doing, uh, we can see they're trying their exploit script. Uh, doing some debugging here, you know, they're checking the output of the script. Uh, Comparing it to the debugger itself to yes. see if the addresses Making line up. Making sure, like, you have your offsets and your links uh, correct. Um, so, uh, it's all good. Again, I'm not super familiar. I think there's, like, a, some kind of integer over underflow uh, business going on in this uh, challenge. Um, but Actually, I'm curious if uh, the challenge author who was in chat last time is in now. Mm. Um, feel free to drop hints uh, just for our, our YouTube chat, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see if um, we'll see if uh, Negasora is still around. So, okay, so we've got it looks like an, uh, an a right payload, a right primitive, because we've got a target for an overwrite. Yeah. Oh, one they're gadget. looking for one they're gadget. They're looking for one gadget. They want to figure out is there one now. So to explain a little bit here, one gadget is. Uh, it's both like a concept and a tool. So uh, it turns out that uh, in various places in libc, if you jump to that address, you will uh, execute the shell. Just get a shell. Yeah. Like it's going to call a system with bin, bin sh or yeah. bin bash or whatever. So yeah. uh, some person or people have created this tool, which will take a libc uh, version and list what these addresses are. Some of them have like conditions, like oh, this register cannot be not a zero or I would, you know, I'd say several years ago, like eighteen oh four Ubuntu or standard installs that was less common. Yeah. It would just tend to just work unconditionally. There was just addresses that were. That was why it was called one gadget, because there was literally one place you go. You jumped there. All you needed was control of instruction pointer, and that would be uh, all you got. Right. Now we're actually looking for ROPers. so we're actually looking for ROP uh, gadgets. Uh, to see how those work. I'm actually going to go check it on Starbug. I want to little get a get a hit there. Yes. So I'll leave you on the stream, and uh, I'll be right back with an update. Definitely. I hope uh, Jordan comes back with some nice updates there. Um, I'm going to lean over a little bit to see better uh, this. So, uh, Ropper, uh, one of uh, several tools to find uh, Rop gadgets in a program. So they're running this on the on the program to uh, find what gadgets are available to you. Then use them to build up the Rop chain. Uh, so return-oriented programming, um, and uh, it can be a bit tricky. Uh, as we see here, it did, didn't look that they had a lot of things to choose. I didn't see if there was like any filter or anything going on there. But regardless, uh, they, so they were looking for specific uh, gadgets with specific properties, um, like a call instruction, I think there, um, to be able to put this into the blockchain uh, and then uh, use that to develop their uh, exploits. Um, yeah, so again, we see them looking at uh, either a little bit double checking what they're doing. Um, we can see that they're rewriting a part of their exploit. There's some kind of address that they're going to, trying to figure out what's what's the appropriate address. So here, they're going for uh, libc base plus an offset. So they're trying to go into one of these one gadgets, I think, uh, and we'll see. So they're just trying them one by one. Uh, to just see if any of them uh, works and if they have the uh, 
constraints uh, satisfied for, for them to be able to do this. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it's working quite yet. Uh, yeah. So what do you have, uh, Jordan? All right, so the update on Starbuck, I would just say Starbuck looks like they're still kind of like thinking about the problem. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of get the impression that that, um, uh, that, that Slash V Slash Home has, has more of a, a sense of, of where they're going. Yeah. And they'll kind of get the building blocks there. Uh, could be wrong though, again, it, it can be really hard to kind of get a sense of where people are at in their head. We're just trying to kind of watch and, and gain understanding. But I definitely saw some more uh, just kind of poking around. Uh, it is interesting. We did see a true Pwn Tools user, right? So it was uh, Pwn Tools coming in from Starbuck versus uh, the custom uh, uh, PTR uh, lib uh, that we're seeing here. And uh, uh, Gef, uh, Jeff, I don't know. Is it, do we? Is there like a canonical pronunciation? I I just kind of guessed because GDB, but yeah. I mean, I I've heard both. I agree with like the the GDB being a GEF. But I think it's funny to say. I think it's canonical. It could, I, if, I, I think I it's fully, Jeff. It like, could very because well be. it's in, like it's like in the name Jeff. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so. So we've definitely got some fans. People yeah. are excited to see to see both their favorite players. Um, and uh, yeah, Fabio, it depends. Some of these these challenges there are absolutely things that you want to look up. You might be looking up a bug in the tool or something you're doing. This particular one. Is, is kind of very classic. I feel like that the, 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 there's they know their tools. They know you know what they're doing. They've got they're not looking up the help for for Pwn tools because they're using features that they've used a lot. Yeah, yeah. They're not looking up the help for these um, you know yeah. these things just because they're more familiar with it. All right, so we're trying. So we've got like it seems like we've got code execution right. If they're already looking for gadgets, they've got code execution. They're really just trying to redirect. Exactly, GIF or GIF, Jeff or GIF. I love it. Exactly. Yes. So we're, we're trying to kind of pivot, get us a gadget that gets us uh, closer to our one gadget, right? Yeah. So they need you to... See that they were looking for a uh, move RSP uh, gadget. So they want to pivot the stack uh, and uh, potentially to use that to have a, like a longer ROP chain, yeah, potentially. Or, yep. Um, Another technique they might have used to get a longer ROP chain, too, is sometimes you can just actually... Uh, pivot back into the same program, right? Into like another read or another receive, right. depending on the, the, the program. So let's see, we're looking at some padding going down in here into the payload. So they're just increasing it. And it, it is fun too, because the speed at which people uh, operated at this tier. Oh, we're done, we have a winner. Right. Oh, I'm so sorry, we didn't see it on screen, but congratulations. Round two winner. So. Very good. I wish we had that one on stream. I'm very sorry for the capture problems. Yeah. We're going to make sure we take this time and we're going to swap out uh, our, uh, our our capture card so that we don't have that happen again. Uh, but thanks again for hanging with us. We'll be back with a uh, better view of both team screens this time. And uh, we'll see you just in a few minutes. Uh, thanks, everybody.
All righty, everybody, we are back. We've swapped out a capture card. I think we're going to be good. So let's go ahead and get everybody to help count me in. You ready? We're going to do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And refresh. Let's bring up the team screens. Uh, production, bring up our team screens. They are live. They've already got the binary, and they are going. There we go. Okay, so let's get up our, our team views, and we're off. We're back this round with Maple Mallard Magistrates, which, I mean, I'm, that's the Mighty Ducks. Yes, right. Like the Mighty that's, Ducks. That's just, I've decided that's what we're going to call them. We're going to call them the Mighty Ducks. Uh, and they're competing against OSU Sec, or OSU Sec. Yep. Uh, so, Do you know who they are? Uh, I believe they're from OSU, uh, either Oklahoma State or it's a, I assume it's a, a state university. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would, I would guess, but, but uh, I don't know for certain. That's yeah, I'm not. I'm also not super familiar with like all the universities in the U.S. and stuff. So yeah, um, yes, but that sounds uh, very possible. Um, what do we have here uh, on the competitors? Uh, so we're screens? looking, we're looking at source code. So I guess we gave uh, source code on this particular challenge because uh, because nobody's got uh, Ida or Benja open. They're just going straight to, uh, so let's see, we've got the handouts. Uh, right, that's some capstone uh, library oh, calls, right? This is interesting. We've got, okay, so we've got capstone. And they're, they're going to just, they're going to run. They're going to try it locally, and they're going to see how it works. Now, this program, this challenge is called NOP coding. Okay, so it's, it's uh, not show, oh, do we lose, oh, no. We lost this. Did you lose that? No, we're, it's back. It's back. Okay, but like, uh, did you lose it on the capture? Because I think it's just our power. No, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're cool. fine. So I think we're losing. There's power. Something power with this is is causing trouble. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Bring the brightness way down. Yes. Uh, let's try. Let's see if we can do this. Yes. So someone's saying uh, Oregon State University. Someone's saying Ohio State University. So. Uh, I mean, they're all good guesses, but yeah. I don't know which it is. Uh, yes. Uh, anyway. Uh, while that's uh, you know sorted out, we right, do sorry. have. Let's see if we, we decrease our power draw on our monitor here. If that'll. Uh... Yeah. Let's hope that that's better. Let's hope that works. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> off to a bit of a rocky start again, but uh, but uh, hopefully we will recover. New challenges each uh, each each time. Oh, uh, there yes. we go. Go beavers. So is this actually the beavers would be uh, beavers versus ducks? Well, the ducks are Oregon. But Ohio State, no, Ohio State's the, the Buckeyes. It is Oregon State. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you. Thank uh, you, chat. Thank you, chat, for filling us in. Can confirm. So I apologize. We should have, we're bad casters. We should have had better, better, uh, you know, intel yeah. on, our, on our, our, our teams. But, but you know how they say, like, the best way to get uh, an answer is, is to just say a wrong one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's how I, like, run a business. It works great. <laughs> I just, you know, I say something and then my coworkers are like, no, you're wrong. I'm like, okay, but now I know the right answer. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, so we can see here that uh, you sh we should be streaming. If we're not streaming uh, at 720p, it is either YouTube or it's just our bandwidth because we should be streaming at 10, uh, 1080. Uh, and the VOD that we're recording is also going to be 1080. So if we need to upload a higher quality afterwards, uh, we will get that. All right. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Okay. So wait a minute. I'm seeing Endosasm over here on. And so remind me, I've got um, Maple Mallet. Okay. So I've got um, Mighty Ducks. Uh, I've got the Mighty Ducks over here. And I'm already seeing something really interesting. This, this, uh, start your clocks. This could actually be fast as solve from what I'm seeing over here. Okay, so this challenge was called NOP coding, and what they're doing is they're told you must uh, get a shell, uh, but everything that you run must be a NOP. Which kind of like makes it doesn't really make sounds sense. Sounds impossible. Yeah. yeah. Like NOPs doesn't do anything. But we did we did give that we gave them a hint actually right. So if it's locked at 720, yeah, we apologize. It is our, uh, uh, it is probably just our stream bandwidth because I believe we're we're streaming at 1080p. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and go full screen to uh, to one of the teams, and we'll try to keep the full screen ones. Uh, let's do the one without the. If we're at 720, we want it to be like real full screen. So we'll get rid of all the the, the pretty artwork, and we'll just do um, let's do, do the the bigger one that's clear without even that. Yeah. So th this will get us uh, looking at uh, Oregon State. So we're seeing the preload, right? So what they're trying to do they, now is they're going to run it with their capstone. Yeah, they're just trying to make the binary work so that they can like debug the stuff. You see, they do some LD preloads to get the proper um, libraries running. Uh, no, these these are not two local teams, as far as I know. I don't believe uh, it's funny that they're a duck themed, right? So the duck theme is, oh uh, yeah, we are 
we are making progress, right? Okay, so what we're, what we're looking at here is we've got uh, a text file on the right that is a NOP, right? And we're assembling it, so it's test.s, and this is being created as a NOP, uh, but when we, we disassemble it, now it's not a NOP, yeah. right? So the reason why we're doing that, and we gave them a hint, we told them that the, bi the binary they're given is a 32-bit binary on this particular, I believe, the, the the point is that there's a mismatch here. Like, yeah. it's being disassembled as 32 bits, but it's executed as 64 bits. It's being run as 64. The other, other way, way, the other, yeah, other yeah. way around. It's yeah, it disassembled as 64 bit, but executed as 32 run bits. as 32 bits. So if if your bytes disassemble as an x64 NOP, but run as a 32 bit, like actual instruction, it will be run. And so yeah, we are definitely. I I, I can't tell from this angle. I don't have a good. Uh, View on, yeah, on they're looking OSU. at the code here. Um, Clearly, the the ducks are, are are I would say in a strong like running your knobs and they should have like they they know they they completely understand right this like I said this could be one of our faster solves because they are absolutely they get it now. How long will it take them to build a payload mm. and can uh, our 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 beavers catch up? Yes. Right, that's gonna be that's gonna be the question we got we gotta figure out. So. Right. You can see that they are uh, looking up the capstone uh, uh, CSV. And, and that, actually, that is a good. So that is a good thing to do because a lot of people that when we tested this challenge just assumed it was disassembling as the same architecture with. Mm. And so actually double checking that call to yeah. capstone, checking the parameter, checking that that information, is actually not a bad idea. I just think we're seeing we're seeing our our, uh, our duck over here um, make. Like they already, they just they looked at it and they just knew. They're like, oh, I get this. I yeah. understand exactly what this challenge is. Yeah, I mean, so. sometimes you're just like uh, on the same kind of like frequency as the challenge author, and like, oh, I see, I see where you're going with this, and then like, you know, just yeah, yeah. So, so MMM and actually, uh, MMM is uh, a very similar name to uh, PPP. Yeah, which is a what a coincidence! Team. What a strange <laughs> coincidence. Uh, so. We mentioned earlier we're seeing a lot of these teams kind of join together. Yeah. Uh, and it's certainly if we look over. We can see an uh, opcode reference yes. here, which is exactly what you w want here. Like, you want to see, like, what's the um, opcodes that will uh, disassemble into the knobs yeah. uh, while at the same time have a different meaning in the 32 bit yeah. uh, context. Now, uh, again, though, I wouldn't say that there is sort of like once you get the right one that works, the rest kind of flows pretty easily, I feel like. Um, having having seen at least a solution to this, we expect there's probably multiple. But one of them, like once you kind of get the right mismatch, you don't need you don't need to build this really complicated payload. It, it can be relatively straightforward. So I say that to to mean that it could be. I guess not out of reach yet. Like while I certainly if I if I you know we're in Vegas, if I was going to make a bet, I might put it now on on uh, on MMM. Yeah. Our mighty ducks. But this is this is not out of reach. There is there is no question because if it's uh, okay. Right, so they just found out, for example, floating point knobs are not considered knobs because it actually says F knob. Right? right, so it's FNOP or however you know if you actually pronounce yeah. it. And so I'm also kind of wondering what the hell is uh, F knob in the first place. A, a FNOP? It's a knob that happens in the floating point instruction space. Right, but like, like what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, if if memory serves, it's even a funny opcode. I think it's D9D0 because you know 90. Is the is the the regular knob, and so I'm, I believe. Let's. I'm not sure, but like you know, yeah. chat, somebody check me out, chat. Uh, open up your binary ninja and type D9D0 and hit you know P disassemble it, uh, or we can look. Yeah, we can look here. So we're we're seeing working over through the knobs. Okay, we're back in capstone. So have we found out the key yet? So let's see. Yeah, they're looking at the capstone <laughs> header. I think they're trying to figure out exactly what the different uh, constants mean, like the different arguments yep. to. Uh, the design, which, which is uh, definitely the key to understand this uh, challenge and to realize like exactly in, in what way it's disassembled. Now you can you could go too far though, right? So like one of the I think the most important things to figure out is how much do you spend into one sinkhole before you mid move to another topic, or how are you going too deep? Mm, Especially yeah, yeah, in yeah. this one, where you know there is a solution that should be doable in 20, 30 minutes, right? Right. And this is kind of like a little bit like a meta gaming thing. We, that we just saw an FNOP over there as well too on, nice. on OSU. So nice. they're they're look they're they're looking through the different different operations. Yeah. Uh, but a little bit like a meta gaming thing in the CTF, like when because you know that there is a solution, like it shapes how you approach the uh, the problem. And like you, you start thinking about like, okay, what what 
what could the author right, have right. been thinking about and, and, and so on. Well, um, and that's one more again. I feel like, um, you know, we saw immediately a 32-64 mismatch mm -hmm. coming out of MMM. So that was just somebody who, who looked at it and instantly thought, if I was making a challenge like this, about like this, here's probably what happens. Yeah. And then it just, they tested it and it worked. Um, and, and that's where like the experience yeah. really uh, comes into play. So um, Iron, we uh, currently have uh, MMM, which sounds suspicious like PPP. Uh, they're a duck themed team. Uh, the full name is uh, Maple Mallard Magistrates. I call them the Mighty Ducks. Uh, and they're playing against the OSU sec, the Oklahoma State University Beavers. So we have a duck versus beaver match. Um, right. Coincidentally, uh, and actually, for context, the, the the seating for these challenges, oh, I do see our, our stream bit rate kind of going up and down. So I apologize for the 720. We are at the mercy of, uh, of the, the, the bandwidth that we've got here. But the good news is we have local feeds and we will make sure that we put... Uh, um, Upload the videos of this, the recordings, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll do the good ones later. So... Um, there was also a question here, like, they can only use NOP in shellcode. And yes, it's like, yes, Sorry, no. I, I said Oklahoma, didn't I? I meant Oregon. Thank you, Lucas. I apologize. Yes, this is Oregon <laughs> State University. We're not operating on much Is this like the U.S. Sleep. version of, like, Sweden, Switzerland? Uh... Oh, there's there's lots of them. I mean, but it's just O universities. There's oh, Oklahoma, Ohio. Yeah. I know, I know. Listen, we have, we didn't sleep a whole lot the last few days. Like mm. we've been hard at work getting this done. So yeah. that I guarantee you, that's not the worst like mix up that we're we're gonna have. All yeah. right. So I'm starting to see. This is interesting. Oh. Okay, so let's go back over to to the the ducks, and we've actually got like a, a payload here. So we're writing. Uh, we've got this, uh, this uh, OX F zero and one F, or no OX F is just uh, zero F and one F. Okay, yeah. so we've got a bunch of knobs that the behavior. Oh, I, I think they're just brute forcing. They're just trying uh, all different combinations of like uh, opcodes to see. Uh, uh. I don't think so. Wasn't I, that like I a loop? Think this, is, this is a little different. I think what we're doing is we know something is disassembled wrong, and we're just trying to either like increment a pointer or something. This feels further along to me. No, no, you see that. They, they loop over all the 256 uh, like, uh, oh, values. Oh, immediate values? No, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. I take that back. So I, it, they're it they're is trying to like exploring, post. basically building up like uh, a playbook, I guess, of, of like what they have to work with. Uh, well, yeah. I, I, AR, I will say that uh, of all the O universities, only one is represented at DEF CON CTF. So by definition, I, I think you might be right. I think certainly in the, the CTF community right now anyway, uh, Oregon State does have, uh, does have that edge on all of their other O universities. So yeah. um, uh, the other thing I, I think is really interesting, I love looking at the tooling, Yeah. right? Like I love to see like somebody's using BB edit with very tight like indentation limits, so you can see a lot of code. Like, this is sort of personal preference, and how people work. Some people are using Vim in the shell, and some people are using, yeah, you know, actual IDEs, or some people are just using text editors. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm really curious to see uh, more of that as well as we go. And then, uh, yeah, Hex Fiend as well, just to be able to get a quick, uh, quick analysis. In fact, when uh, this challenge was being tested, one of the things I saw done that I thought was really nifty was open up the binary, um, and I think you could do this in Gita or Ida or Binja. Um, it works really well in Binja, though, to be able to just like type a bunch of hex bytes and have them dis disassembled simultaneously in each of the widths. Oh, nice. Right? Yeah. And so, actually, no, you know, I take that back. You can't actually have overlapping architectures in, in Ida or Gita. You would, you, but you could easily like wire up obj dump, right, to do the same thing. Just yeah. disassemble them both side by side. Yeah. Let me fiddle with a bunch of bytes uh, and work from there. So. Uh, we're looking, yeah, we're looking through a bunch of these. I think once the right one is found, it'll go quickly. Right. So is there like but one or two operations here that are like key? To there's at least one that that I, when I saw it get done, when when Glenn was um, was producing the the answer for, was definitely um, key. And in fact, we've got plenty of time left. But if we hit like the 30 minute mark or the 25 minute mark, what we'll probably do is go tell them a hint like the mnemonic that they should be aiming for. Right. And that might help them you know, get a little bit further along. So we've oh. talked before about what happens if teams don't solve this in time. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a good looking list. Oh, this is interesting. I see some inks and decks. Oh, that's useful. Yeah. What, 
what could you do interesting if you could anchor deck a pointer? Well, now I expect we're going to go back and look at, um, no, you need the actual disassembly at this point though, right? Like, or a debugger. So there we go. We're going to see Ghidorah. We're going to see a uh, debugger. I think we've got a gadget, and now it's a question of what can we do with it. Yeah. It's like incrementing, uh, very, very useful to uh, like, either do like self-modifying code or just you know manipulate pointers. Just misalign some pointer yeah. at something else, right? Like what can we what can we point it at? So right. Yeah. And you have an ink ESP oh, there, for example. There's and there's a seg fault, right? So writing a bunch of those, so we know there's there's something malicious happening. Right. But how are we ensure that? So Fabio, to answer your question about why they're using a hex editor, um, they're usually going to be using a hex editor here because they wanted to just enter a bunch of different bytes in and see how they were decoded, how, how they disassembled a 64-bit and 32-bit disassembly, because that's, again, the, the sort of crux of this, of this challenge, yeah. is that the, the, the program tells you it's only going to run your shelf code if it only contains all, all NOPs, um, but it's not actually true, because it's, it's going to disassemble them for one architecture and then run them for the other, and right. so that's what you're, you're trying to exploit. Let's double check back on our, oh man, this is, this is tempting. Um, yeah, but let's go back over the debugger, to OSU. But let's go uh, back to, to uh, OSU and let's uh, let's see where we're at over here. Um, yes. So they are also looking at an opcode reference uh, and now. And I, I've started I, writing a, a script. So like they're you know on the same path. If but they if they get that ink, they're only a minute behind. Yes. Right. Like on, that's what I say. Honestly, if you've got an ink, uh, they've they've still got a shot. Again, bet man, I, I still know as much as where I put it. So let's let's go keep our eye on back on the, the ducks. Uh, see where the mighty ducks are at. And we're already looking at memory maps and uh, if we we should we should keep a vote of Jeff versus uh, you know Yeah. Uh, Pwn bag or you know, all the different other options. So here right. we go. So they're using Gidra as well for the But like I I'm waiting for like I think I think they're just so much faster than me because they flip the gear and they flip away immediately. I don't remember yeah. if they just remember the disassembly so much. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, maybe though, they just wanted to you know double check like one small detail. Like yeah. you have one one question that and you want answered, just check look like, back, back at oh, it. Like what, what what was the size of that buffer? So and again, we've got the choice here between what register do we want to increment, and so that's the key question. Mm, right. Which one is most useful? And I will say a debugger also makes a lot of sense here too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, AR, absolutely. I think everybody is impressed OSU SEC. And in particular, the most impressive thing about OSU SEC is that they're one of the few teams that didn't like combo up with a million other teams, right? Because a lot of these other teams. To, yeah, to our knowledge, they are like actually just OSU SEC. Yeah, and it sounds like we've got a lot of their fans in the chat. And yeah, that, that, that's super impressive. You definitely get like an underdog vibe. Uh, and you you want them to do well because yeah. they're competing against these like CTF giants that are around for ten years and they're combined yeah. with four of the I mean, teams. Going up against like PPP plus friends, like that's uh, that's uh, rough. Uh, that's like, daunting. Yeah, I've I've lost a lot to PPP mm, without yeah. friends. We and all so, uh, yeah. we all have uh, yeah. so. over the years. All right, so uh, taking a look in the debugger. It seems like there's some kind of controlled values in there and some like uh, is that the stack they're looking? Yeah, it's. Looking at the stack pointer, looking at the memory maps, again looking at like disassembly. What RP OS X sixty four? I don't know that. No, that's yeah, that's RP plus uh, plus. That's another uh, ROP. Uh, okay. Uh, ROP gadget oh, there we finder. Go. Uh, I uh, tend to use that one. Uh, I think, like, all the cool kids nowadays use ROPer, but yeah. I think before before that, uh, RP plus plus was like the good stuff. And so I, I'm still kind of using that. Um, this is one of the things I'm actually excited about too, right? Is is seeing the new toys and tools. Because uh, I I don't actively, oh, we got a little bit of a gear there. Oh, there we go. So we were looking for, um, uh, like it looked like God entries maybe. Uh, we were, I saw a bunch of, a list of function pointers. So I yeah, I haven't actively played CTF in, in several years now. And so I, I you know, I know enough to maybe make a small challenge an easy challenge. Uh, and I know this is going to get destroyed by really good people. But it's fun to see what are the latest tools, what, you know, what have, you know, I kind of missed out on and watching people, uh, watching people do that. So, all right. To recap, we're 19 minutes in and we've got uh, at least one team. Oh, no, this is, we're already in the dubber. Let's go take a, take a look back over actually at OSU because yeah. we are in a debugger. Yes. That might be a good sign. You can see them stepping through a whole bunch of knobs, which uh, 
doesn't really give them anything so far, so I guess they're... Well, you know, but it's going to say NOP whether it is or not well, in the output. Right. Did you so see what you, they sent in? No, but you see in the debugger, oh, it's right, also right, right, listed right, as right, NOP. Right. And also in the output yes. to the left, it's listed as NOPs. So they haven't uh, found the key mismatch yet. Correct. Or, or if I, they have, they haven't found they the haven't right gadgets. They haven't exploited it yeah, yet, so yeah, they're like, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually taking advantage of it. Uh, however, you can see uh, here over at uh, MMM that uh, you have like a sequence of... Uh, X values uh, listed here in their exploit script. Uh, so they they it looks like they are like going somewhere, putting together. Oh, I wonder if they're putting together a shellcode payload in these immediates. See, it's called Smuggle Thirty Two. Right? Oh, nice. I like that. And also, so, again, nice with nice naming of things. Uh, we've yeah, we've gone boring now. Now it's just X Thirty Two. Uh, so we we lost the the. Oh. The more interesting name. Yeah, I mean Smuggle yeah. 32, I think. Oh, there right. we go. Okay, so an ink ESP. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, not shell code. Pointers, right? Clearly, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. executable code. Yes. So they're gonna they're gonna have a um, this X32, which is gonna let them them rot potentially, and they're gonna be able to ink the stack pointer. This sounds like a great technique. Yes. Increment stack pointer, overwrite the return address, maybe. And. And, and and go from there. Yeah. And you've got to, and then maybe either one gadget or multiple gadgets or like you've got a sort of straightforward shot. Oh, there's a win function. Or, in this or maybe you could, oh, you know what, though? If a team doesn't actually open this thing up in a disassembler, if they only use a debugger, they won't see win. Well, they have the source code. Oh, they have the source code. They have, they the, have source the source code. code. That's a good but point. But this is definitely the thing that you can, like, you know, because I think it's maybe, like, at the top of the, like, it's a small function at the top of the file. Like, you know, if you just scroll past that it, because, like, you don't notice. Honestly. And it's, then you build your mental model yeah, yeah, all yeah. around, like, you know, a rub chain or, or something. It, and, it, you it's know, the kind of thing that happens a lot in this environment. When you're mm, doing a live yeah. CTF and you're under pressure and you're under the gun, or you remembered it, but it's 20 minutes later and now you've forgotten it. Right. So it, it's it's possible we see somebody get tunnel vision and, yeah. and miss that. So I mean, we'll I've see done that, like, in, in, in several CTFs where, like, Oh, there was actually this me memory region that was like writable or yeah, executable yeah, yeah. or something. Like you didn't see it. The binary is actually executable, even yeah. though because like, it's running an emulator or something, and you assumed that the permissions were yeah, yeah were fixed. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it, it it can lose you a lot of hours. Uh, All right, so we've got our ink ESP pattern. We've got our and, and we are using pwn tools, right? So we're seeing pwn tools. Do we? I, I don't think we have a payload yet. We're still got. Unfortunately for OSU, I think we we don't have an understanding yet. Right. I think we're kind of lost in the weeds. So, so this is this is not looking good over there. We're gonna we're gonna keep it on, um, keep it on the, on the ducks and and see if we can uh, see if this will this will this will come in. Right. Because this is I mean this is looking really good. Right. We've got the ability we're, we've got the ability to misline the stack, which gets us a return address overwrite, which gets us an you know, instruction pointer, and we've got a win function. Right. It looks do like we, they're do dumping we, this to a file now. Do we have SLR? Check. Do we need to know if it's randomized or is it? Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I, I believe if if the the source if they pull up the source again, the first line of the source was the build instructions that was used to compile that binary. Mm, okay. So we would know if they flashed to that again real quick. Um, we've got uh, not coding that C. So oh, we're one away. It makes you want to like you know. Yeah. Touch the yeah, screen we should like, have like. Uh, some kind of plug-in on their computer. Yeah, just like, no, no, we need to look at this one. Well, <laughs> really, yeah. The, the, the later iteration of this, we're going to have more, you know, I think, machines here. But we're already overloading the number of available USB ports, even with several hubs. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so I, I'm i curious. I know there's a lot of uh, Beaver fans in the uh, in the chat. You all still got faith? Are you still still in hope? Or are, are you, um, there we go. See, hanging, so you've, there, there are still the Oregon fans out there, right? Oregon, yeah. I said it right this time? Okay, good. I'll get it right. All right. You can just keep rotating around. like it's Just different O's each yeah. time? I mean, they might get yeah, Ohio, a little offended. Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon. Switch to all of them. Yeah. All right, so. You can see there, again, doing some, like. Um, brute force, looking for something else. Yeah. So this, to me, is like is, is like somebody stepping back saying, I'm not sure I have all the gadgets. Like, I think that was all the gadgets they needed. I think that was sufficient to win. Glenn, is that sufficient? Or is there so, more to it? Uh, We're getting a mostly from Glenn. Yeah. And I can't hear him at all. I can't hear you, unfortunately, no, over there. Uh, we're just going to roll with it and say that, you know, they might be a, need a few instructions. But, I mean, you should be able to, because, like, you, sure, you can in increment the stack pointer, right? But then you need to actually modify the value. So you need one more thing to actually, like. No, like, no, no. If, if your buffer is on the stack, then you don't need to do any such thing. 
you can just return when it points to your uh, if if your input that you send in is is on the stack. Oh right, yes. You just yeah, need to yeah, line yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do. Okay, of course, of right. course. Uh, so I, I think a variant of that is possible right. um, in this particular binary. Yeah. So. But your input is still slightly constrained then on the like. Let's say you would put you would put like a return address or like a something there. I don't remember the the source code if this was like a string operations if a null terminate will break it or not. That's that ah, is I see. Okay, right. Yeah, so you could potentially smuggle it like behind the the other stuff, but yeah. But no, you give it binary because it it disassemble it, it doesn't assemble your oh, That's right. That's right. You give it the the hex and yeah, it's actually right. going to, you know, put that yeah. buffer as those bytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh presumably do it. Right. 5 minutes to a fresh start. No, 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 no. We we have so they, they have plenty of time left. Yes. Um, well, so we are coming up on, this is the point where if neither team had made progress, we'd walk over to them and we'd say, you need to misalign your, your 64, your 32, and you need to find a gadget that's going to let you uh, get the, the payload. Um, but because, because we're already seeing at least, one, once at least one team has sort of made it to that point. Yeah, and the, he clearly that's the case. Here. Which has been for several, several minutes now. Yes. Um, we're not going to do it now. That said, if we come up on 45 minutes, yeah. we do hit sudden death mode, yes. and we will swatch over. So there is 20 minutes left where if uh, the duck doesn't successfully finish this challenge in the next 20 minutes, there is still a chance that we go to sudden death, and our beavers that, could have a chance. Yes. So that is that is absolutely possible. Yeah. Uh, let's... Uh, all right, I'm going to just look for a second and try to, try to get caught up here where we're at because... It's a little concerning when I see going back to the well of trying to find more gadgets. Right. Um, and I'm wondering, we're still looking for more patterns, but as far as we know, we think there's enough gadgets. Uh, we think there's enough gadgets there. Yeah. Uh, I have actually not looked at our reference solution for this, so I don't know exactly what instructions it, it contains. But uh, it's, I, uh, I thought it was an uh, I thought it was an ink ESP actually, or yeah. an ink or DAC ESP, one of the two to like misalign yeah. the the stack pointer. Uh, into a bu buffer you controlled. Right, so we've got a question about the sudden death thing. Yeah, so yeah. we have this thing. So this is a time limit of uh, 45 minutes. So if they hit that, we will stop the challenge because then uh, it was, uh, well, we don't want to drag this on for too long. So in particular, the whole match on every team versus team matchup really needs to stay under an hour. Otherwise, the schedule starts slipping and throws off all the other events. Right. So this. What's that? All right. Do you want to do you want to get on uh, the mic and do it, or you just want to like tell us from there? Uh, you have a mic over there. You actually that mic is even still live, so careful rubbing it on things. But All if right. you talk into that mic, um, it might just be easier to hold it than yep. try to put it on. It's up to you. There we go. So I think we've got Glenn. It looks like your levels are All up. All right. Let's see if this is so working. So our producer Glenn and challenge author Glenn is going to come here. We'll, we'll tell you a little bit more, uh, Rakesh, about sudden death in a second. Let's let Glenn talk a little bit more about what the expected solution is here. All right, so... And this is why the, this is why the, uh, um, the competitors have those earmuffs on, so they can't hear us as we're talking about all these, these details. Yeah, let me just make sure the levels are actually working. All right, so generally speaking, the way that this works is since you have the difference between x 632 and 64 bits, you can get what the MMM player has found, which is a like a Rex W knop, which on basically on X64, X8664, it disassembles to a knop. And on 32 bit, it disassembles to like decrement stack pointer knop. From this, you can gain control over the stack pointer. You can go either direction, but the way that the reference solution works is it just changes the stack pointer to point into the buffer of knobs that you send to the server. And since the binary is not pi, and so the addresses are fixed, and there's a win function, you should be able to just get the stack pointer such that when the function returns, it returns to the win function. I, I think we need to give a hint. And here's we my proposal. Here's, here's the hint that I'm going to give. Yeah. I think MMM missed the fact that this does not have pi. OK, should, yeah. should we just so tell they're them looking that for a more complicated one. But I also think that OSU has missed the 30.64. We can give them the same hint to both of them and help them both out equally, which is that we can tell them they need to double check how these binaries were compiled. 
we need to tell them we need, they need to check the first line of the source code that tells them how the binary was compiled. Yes. That will tell them both something useful to the state that they're at. Yeah. All right. Uh, so do you want to go get? I will go. I'm gonna go do that because we did not um, add like the messaging thing. So uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll go tell them. So the, the, or just the, write write a note out and then just hand them each the note. Right. Maybe. Where's your notebook? Um, there we go. Yes. And. We'll do this. We'll do this now. So we'll give yeah. them each that little bit hint. Yeah. Uh, and and to answer. Oh, sorry. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, kill the volume level on that third. Yeah. Mute that. Sorry for the ASMR there on the the microphone as we set it down. We got to be like, yeah. Um, I got you, Pen. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'm tethered in because I wired my microphone through my vest this last time. Uh, so yeah. I looking, can't go anywhere. Looking good, but uh, you can it's explain fancy, sudden death. Right. So, the the sudden the sudden death plan. Just keeping an eye on, on, on our duck just to see if they've got anything else. The sudden death plan is that if we get into a situation where both teammates are stuck, neither one's making more progress, uh, it's not looking like they're going to solve it in time, we have a totally different challenge. We have an easier, simpler, quicker challenge that we will field that is meant to just break a tie, essentially, because we don't want to have like something in where neither one can solve it. So if we get to the point where we have, so 15 more minutes, if we get to that point, we will uh, deploy uh, a sudden death challenge. We'll change it and say, sorry, uh, you didn't solve it in the 45 minutes. Here's another challenge. Try that. Uh, we haven't figured out if that takes too long. We just kind of have to wait till that gets done. Um, so hopefully those, but those are, those are intended to be like the easiest possible uh, challenges that we could do. So that's what we're doing with that. We're writing out the same hint to both teams. Uh, first line in this first line of source code. Right, so we're going to tell them that the they should they should each double check how the binary was compiled. I think that'll be nice, both fair and yet also useful to both of them. So we'll go ahead and do that and uh, get that to both the teams, because what's going to happen here is again, if if the duck can can finish this out, if they can actually successfully solve this, they have a shot at it. But if they don't, um, then they're going to basically kind of be reset. They're both going back to zero on this new challenge. All right, so the new challenge will. Um, will uh, be like fresh territory for both of them. So uh, let's 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 uh, switch maybe to the uh, uh, one of the other cameras and we can see uh, let's see, see in the background as, as uh, Carl's gonna go deliver our hints to both competitors and uh, we'll see if this has an impact on them. And in the meantime, thank you. Thanks uh, uh, is it down down or dawn dawn? I forget. I feel like I should remember this because I know I've, I've seen the hint before. So that's a good question. What is OSU Sec up to? Let's. I th we're just looking at the source again. It looks like. Um, so we have deployed the hint to to both players, um, and it's it's hard to tell because they're just looking at the. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Peter. That they, they might need a bigger hint. Um, we we could, we could give them both an explicit hint of something like, the binary is not ASLR'd, and this is 64 32 bit misalignment. Um, to get them both past the next down. Thank you, down, down. Um, or maybe it was down, dawn. It could be, it could be one of each. Um, so we do have uh, um, a, a, a bigger hit we might have to give to both of them. We will see. I, I, wouldn't, I would not be surprised. And, it's, and it's, again, this is one of those things where if you're playing at home, you look at this and you think, oh, man, all you have to do is move the stack pointer. You, you should totally be able to like, finish this out. It is so different. It's so different when yeah. you are on the camera, when you've been stuck on the step for a while, you get kind of into rabbit holes. You're thinking, surely there's some other gadget that I'm missing. Surely there's some other thing that I need to find. Um, or if you feel like you just don't even have a, uh, have a way to do it. So let's go ahead and prepare the next hint. Yep. Um, that we'll give them in a couple of minutes. If, if, if one of them starts to make more progress, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll hold off um, and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I, if we give them the op code, we're giving one team what the other one already has. Um, so I think this hint should say, um, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe we let's, can. Yeah, let's think. What 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 what's the clock at? Yeah, I think. Uh, so wait a few more minutes, right? And, uh, So there's a question about how long for this. So the idea is that at 45 minutes, we will switch to the... And we start every match on the hour. So we started for us at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So we're 34 minutes in. So we have 11 more minutes uh, before we... So we're... Uh, are we brute forcing? Maybe we're done brute forcing. 
Yeah, they removed the for loop. Okay, They're so we're not putting some address in there. Uh, this is or... test.py. Okay. So this Python quit unexpectedly. Nice. Uh, wait a minute. Exec VE launch. Maybe we are close. Yeah. Okay. This is this is a good sign. Okay. Yes. Oh, look, he's looking for system. Okay. Okay. This looks positive. I think I think the the realization has been has struck home. I think we're we're about to watch uh, watch it come on the home stretch. I still don't see OSU Sec, unfortunately, coming up with that key 3264 insight. Um, even after they hinted, the binary was compiled for 32-bit, but the disassembly is 64-bit. So we're looking for a bin SA string. We're going to pass it as an argument to system. Right, so they're going to skip the win function. They're going to just uh, put the, but this is. <laughs> Again, there's literally a win function. Yes. They just need the address of that. But yeah, luckily, this, this is 32-bit, right? So they can just put the argument on the stack and then just, I mean, it's like exactly. it's marginally more difficult. Well, slightly like, bit more work. You would need work. to put two addresses on the stack instead of one address. So. Yep. As long as there's room, and I believe there's there is plenty of room yeah, in this. Not a huge buffer, loss, so. but yeah, definitely it could have cost them. Okay, uh, this this is looking real close. We're getting yeah. the last address in. Let's see if this does it. Uh, yeah, it, again, we predicted this earlier. We said the win function we gave them the source. It's very easy to miss. You you 100% can get tunnel vision, and until they either have forgotten about it or never seen it. In fact, in this case, I wouldn't even be surprised never seen it. Because um, there's not been a lot of poking around in the. Uh, no, because they were so quick at understanding, like, like what sort the of what the goal was. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's the thing. Then you build this abstraction in your head. This mental model, yeah. Yeah, mental model. Like, and this this thing just doesn't exist. Like, there it is. Congratulations. All right, we have a win. Congratulations to our ducks. I'm excited. We didn't need a sudden death. That is our third round uh, complete. We will see you all back here in about wait, 20 minutes. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That was just a local. That was just local. No, no, it's not. Oh. Submitter. It ran. It did run? It ran, okay. right? No, 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 it's. Sorry, I, th I, th I, I did, you didn't trigger it, right? I no. saw it trigger on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're done. We're done. We're done. All, all right, right. congratulations. Done. Okay. We will see everybody back here uh, at the top of the next hour. Uh, very, very fun match. Uh, thanks to both the teams. We'll see everybody uh, in a few minutes. We out.
Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are here again, the last round of the day. Apologies for the 10-minute the delay on this one. We've, we're have we trying to hunt out a bad cable. One, somewhere in our infrastructure is a bad cable, and it's causing one of our streams to have issues. So we might have some intermittent connectivity for one of our players. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get a kickoff right away. We want to get these team, team members back to their teams as soon as we can. So uh, let's go ahead and get a countdown of five, four, three, two, one. Go! And now they're off. Okay, so uh, we've already got the first one downloaded. So, and, and this particular one, actually, can you grab me my notebook over there with our, our teams and whatnot? Um, this one, we've got uh, the new organizers, and I believe we've got Team Taiwan was the name that they, uh, they requested because it's, again, another one of these, these mega teams uh, that has uh, a conglomeration of many different, uh, different teams. So we've got Team Balson, Team 217, Team TSJ.TW. Uh, and it, so there's another team that has TW in the name that's Tokyo Westerns, right. a Japanese team. But this is the Taiwanese team because it's .TW. Right. So uh, let's Easy go ahead. To mix up. And, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a Team. I think Team Balson should be the one that I've got over here on my monitor. And they are already off, and they're in Ida uh, looking at our challenge. Now, again, you'll notice all of our challenges are named Challenge, just the way that our Docker deployment kind of works. The official name of this challenge is called Nerd Sniped. Right. And so it, it, what it, are things you can get nerd sniped by? A I lot mean, of things, but uh, yeah. yeah. We'll see how that I plays get nerd out. sniped by like a Rubik's Cube? Like yeah. A good, a good puzzle, maybe? Yeah, a good puzzle. You yeah. can see, maybe something like that. That'll do it. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we got you 1080p back and going. Hopefully, we'll figure out our, uh, our issue with our, our HDMI cable, and we'll have. Uh, much better consistent capture across both team members tomorrow. Something about this cable is like it's heating up or something. It's the first we had several hours of testing last night with no problem, and something something's going on now. So yeah. we'll 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 give that a run. And sure enough, I literally just saw a rename solve puzzle. So we've we've renamed this function solve the puzzle. Um, so what they're looking for, they know it's a puzzle of some sort. Uh, I'm curious if we get uh, someone just kind of running it and interacting with the binary, or if we're going to more static analysis. Um, but actually, yeah, this should be should be much higher quality with with the full 1080. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have even the local recordings. We're also not uh, 1080. They were only in 720 as well. So I apologize. Those first couple matches, uh, we're not gonna have uh, we're we're not gonna have the the um, uh, the higher quality video for those either. But all 12 other matches from here on out are gonna be in high def because uh, we have a lot of these to go. So you'll see your favorite players that won in the first couple rounds. They're going to come back. We're going to we're going to see them again. Uh, so, oh no, that was cool. What was I didn't I didn't notice that website. Have you seen that one before? Uh, no. I'm what? curious what that was. So now they're on the Ubuntu repo. Uh, they're getting a particular glibc version, which makes sense. That's often common. Now I think for most of these, we like included a libc if we thought it was necessary. Yes. Um, so it's kind of a hint to the teams. Like if we 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 we're we're trying to like give out everything that we could, uh, make it as self-contained as possible. And so we'll see uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if that one ends up ends up being useful. But we've got our binary challenge. Uh, this one is starting to to be a little bit more difficult, though. I would I would say yeah, our, our, our challenge uh, difficulty is cranking up yes. a tiny bit. Uh, right. And we're going to see that kind of trend throughout the whole the whole rest of the weekend. Right. I'm sure we'll have some easier ones. Some that somebody finds an amazing solution to, solves it quickly. Yeah. But on the topic of like difficulty, like that's. I mean, we have an idea of like what's more difficult and what's easier and so on, but uh, of course, like we can be wrong. Like people can have like different, uh, you know, specializations in their skill sets and uh, and so on. So something that we might think is in, in both directions, right? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So uh, something that we might think uh, is uh, easy might be actually kind of tricky, and then the other way around. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what's what's going on. There's still some reverse, in, like the initial reverse engineering going on of the. Program, for example, this kind of step uh, was not really needed in the previous challenge, where we just gave them the full source code uh, yes. with like names and everything. Um. And and it is a uh, yeah. As an organizer, you have a lot of levers to pull. You have a lot. Of, it's, it's ironic because we have the organizers here yeah, up, uh, yeah, playing, yeah. although unfortunately they're on our, our non capture screen. Unfortunately, um, I just had to make sure that we had them lined up right. I freaked out for a second, not realizing. Yes, yes they are. They are on the right halves. Um, but uh, the team organizers, uh, we're not seeing them. But as a challenge organizer, as somebody making challenges, 
you can strip a binary, you cannot strip a binary, you can include debug symbols, you cannot have any, you know, so all these... Yeah, different um, levels of optimizations. Yep. Well, like, because a lot of optimization also kind of acts as a slight, like, obfuscation Mild as well. Mild obfuscation, yeah, yeah. So, um, you, we have all seen these, like, you know, optimized uh, mem copies and everything, but you have all this, like, bit oh, magic stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, you get vec vector operations in your in your mem copies, right. and it's, it's um, so, yeah, and that's yeah. and that's where to some degree you can make uh, an easy challenge hard with just tedious things. Mm, yeah. So it is interesting that you see a lot of sort of like I, I would say cheap challenge design where it's like, yeah, we just made it harder by doing X. Right. And it didn't make it more interesting. It just made it like, yeah, just slightly more annoying to do the thing that you want. So it's sometimes a really good easy challenge is actually like you're just really focusing on that one core thing that you want you want to do. Yeah. Uh, which makes a lot of fun for for what we're doing here. So, right. Uh, so still at that um, reverse engineering, trying to name different things. We've seen like they name the functions like solve puzzle, and you see some variables getting named like the input. Um, it's all trying to like get get an understanding of what is this program doing, uh, and there are kind of like two parts to it. Like first of all, like what's the um, intended functionality yeah. of the program, yeah. and then from there you can start to understand. Uh, in in what way is it acting uh, not as intended? Like where's yeah. the bug? Or or well, in this case, where where the, the the author intended a bug. Right. But in the normal case, where it's unintended vulnerabilities, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or in this case, what's the surface level intended? What's it what's it claimed to be able to do? Yes. Uh, and then what is it what does it actually do that maybe that may be different? Right. So let's see uh, what we're doing. So I, and this is nice too because we're actually getting. This is the first time we've seen a little reverse engineering workflow. Yes, right? a lot of the other ones have been like basically a quick glance at the code or disassembly has kind of like revealed what's going on. Yeah. Here they actually need to kind of understand what is going on. Okay, so we're still sort of starting our framework for our our exploit here, but I don't. I think it's just getting the menus and interacting with it, right? And so we're looking. Oh, okay. So there's a current puzzle state. All right. So Puzzle. That puzzle looked interesting. That looked yes. like maybe uh, like a nine by nine grid. Yes. Of numbers. With numbers. Yeah. yeah. It could be uh, maybe like a Sudoku. Uh, I, I think that's a great guess. And yeah. of course, you know, we're a little a little spoiled here, a little tainted <laughs> knowledge. But th it, this is indeed a Sudoku. Uh, in fact, when we f when when somebody was like kind of playtesting and validating this challenge, we sort of were like, wait a minute, you just you just solve a Sudoku and that's yeah. it. And the author was like, no 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 no, <laughs> and that's not actually not actually possible. Uh, so it is a little bit trickier than that. So we'll see as our teams discover um, it's not just a straight, put it into a Sudoku solver, get a correct answer, and win. Um, it is going to be a little bit more tricky. And this is one I am almost positive we're going to need a hint on. Right. So I'm, I'm going to propose at like 15 minutes in if yeah. we don't see... Um, like progress. Progress. And in fact, actually, let's, why don't you go ahead and take a take a look at the organizers, maybe yes, too. Yes, I will do that. And if we if we're looking for them to to uh, kind of have a hint as to what they're doing, like indicate that they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, does it come on occasionally? Okay. So it's apparently flickering in and out. Occasionally, we're getting getting our video. We we swapped out the capture card that worked for a while until it didn't, uh, and then we swapped out the USB C cable and that worked for a while until it didn't. And so now we're convinced that it's just the HDMI cable itself uh, that, is, that is causing trouble. And I think this has been true even if we were direct wired into the laptop. So it's not the capture on the other side. Yes, because we also did swap out the, uh, the USB-C adapter once too. So we've swapped every component except the, the HDMI cable, uh, partly because they're like taped to the floor and they're a 30 foot long cable. So we got to go and get some, oh, there we go. I saw a, I did see a solver pop up briefly. I saw a Sudoku yeah, solver. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Uh, yeah. So the player from the organizers copy pasted the uh, current state of the puzzle into, and they googled for a Sudoku solver. Um, so we'll see to what extent that will help them. Um, it's, I mean, again, I'm not completely familiar with the intended solution here, but I would assume that it still involves. Like yes. sol solving the Sudoku, but not only doing that. It, so it, it is trickier than that. That's, yeah. That, yeah, that's right. So um, I have a little bit more info. Um, yeah, we're still seeing that that kind of solver flash in and out uh, occasionally um, on the on the display. So uh, it it there's going to be some memory corruption here. Yeah, there, there is indeed. This is not just now. Although I will say, it is actually a perfectly valid category of challenge in a lot of CTFs, right? Where you would actually do have a more programming challenge or a puzzle action, like yeah. that, that happens. And yeah. I think 
honestly, even in moderation, I think those can be fun and enjoyable. Yes. Mixed in amongst your traditional like happy competition. Yeah. Typically, they are branded as uh, PPC. It's the category in, in normal uh, CTFs, which I think is like professional programming challenge or something like this. Uh, people familiar with like, you know, ICPC style yep. uh, algorithms competitions or so might find. Although usually they're kind of like framed uh, slightly differently, yeah. uh, but it, it's kind of like the same uh, general idea there. Yeah, and there's, there's no security flaw. There's right. really just rather solving some hard mathematical problem with the, with the right algorithm or with the yeah. right approach yeah. uh, to, to, to kind of get it working. Right. So, but yep. that's not the case here. Like there's, there's an aspect of that, but that's not enough. We are doing, right. this, is a, this is truly a pwnable. There is memory corruption involved. Uh, yeah. Although I will say, and I'm looking to see if somebody finds um, the the sort of like win function, like when you have a correct solve CT, uh, correct solve Sudoku. Um, I think we're going to see like so this this function here, uh, they've named it check, returns right whether or not we've successfully calculated the value, um, a, a valid uh, uh, solve. This. Uh, the result of that is going to determine basically what you call a win function. So it is going to kind of do the win for you. So you already sort of, you know that you have to solve it. Right. Your just question is, okay, what mechanic will actually get me to solve it? And can I cheat it? Do I have to have a combination of a solver plus yeah. a cheat? Like what, what, what is that, that ratio going yeah. to entail? Because at face value, it kind of looks like you just solve the Sudoku and you win. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, like yeah. Yeah, DEF CON finals, even even being a, in a, a sort of easy live CTF, yes. I would I would think people would be like, nah, wait a minute, like there's there's something here, and yeah. I, I think if you can also, uh, there's not a lot of uh, values here, and so I don't know, like, I think the idea is that this, these are just not solvable because there's not enough information in there. Like some Sudoku puzzles are very minimal, but they're designed to be solved, right? right. They're made to be solvable. I think I that. remember that like if you have 13 digits, you're guaranteed to have oh, a is that so? Here we go. So solution. One, two, three. Okay, so this one definitely has more than that, but okay. there's going to be some other issues yeah. with it still. I'm, I'm it not sure if my trivia is, is, is correct, yeah, yet, but I, I, I vaguely remember, like, if you have 13 digits, you have a unique solution. You can have a unique solution with fewer digits, but so it's not guaranteed. It, I don't know that that's true, because I can just give you all of the ones, for example, and all of but the that's twos, just nine. And, all, and all the twos, and that doesn't give you enough information to know where all the numbers, other numbers are. Uh, Maybe, maybe no, in terms no, of like no, because like you can no. So it's high. It's maybe it's twenty one or something. Then I, there is a number. I yeah, would I'm believe just it. Calling, I'm just uh, you know. Where's where's our cracking the cryptic? Uh, oh phone yeah, of friends. Uh, yes. And go to the, the, <laughs> the YouTube uh, stream. Yeah, great, uh, great channel. So so here we go. We're seeing uh, Sudoku solver Python. So we're, we're we're seeing people investigate that. All right, we are now fifteen minutes in. Yes. I think we should be preparing our hints because I actually think this one is a little too subtle, and we're gonna have to point them. Um, in the right direction. Yes. Uh, without actually giving them the thing. So. Yeah, and we should uh, notice notice now that even though uh, the time is like uh, 24, right? Like 5, we started a 10 bit minutes late, late because yep. of technical difficulties. So yep. they are only 15 minutes into the challenge. Correct. Correct. So we have we have more more time than the, the clock looks like compared to the other ones where we started much closer to uh, to on time. So uh, we're trying a solver again. So so trying a solver on here, which is not going to be sufficient. So I, I think we need to figure out if there is an official hint from the challenge author. So we've got uh, Glenn over in <coughs> in the production booth, uh, as it were, which is otherwise known as the other side of the table that we're sitting on here. Yeah. Um, is gonna is gonna reach out and see if we have an official. We have like three times the number of computers compared to the number of crew members for this uh, setup. We have a lot of displays yeah. and I mean. An order of magnitude more cables, I think, than uh, yeah. But it's uh, and once we once we find out what is breaking our our, our secondary capture, uh, and so actually speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and go take a look at the organizers. I want to see if they're making progress. Right. Uh, while we figure out what we're doing with that uh, with that hint, yeah. If we're gonna give it, um, and if the chat, if you guys have any questions uh, about where we're going, uh, let us know. Yep. Uh, and uh, I'll be back with an update. Great. Um, so while uh, Jordan does that, uh, we can try to uh, see is uh, that uh, we... Oh, okay, so I've just been informed that uh, the puzzle that, the, uh, that you were given 
is impossible to solve. That's the kind of the trick here. So at face value, everything looks fine. You just need to solve the Sudoku, but actually there is no solution. This is a, an invalid state uh, for the Sudoku. Uh, so um, once they, and this is something that can really throw you off, right? Because if you uh, take this and like you put it into a solver or something and the solver says like, nah, there's no solution, you might be starting to think like maybe the solver has a bug or like some maybe my in the format of my input is, is wrong or something like this. Um, it, and, and only later you might question the like the impossibility of the puzzle. Um, so this is where they have to then cheat to solve the impossible Sudoku uh, to then get this win function. Um, we can see here on, on, on the Balson screen that uh, they are looking still at the kind of uh, decompilation here, um, thinking hard about this, uh, trying to figure out like wh what is going on here, like why is this not working? Um, they have this, it's, it's, it's this check function, right? Uh, so they're trying to think about like what, in what way does this function not behave uh, correctly, maybe. Uh, maybe they have uh, realized that, like, you're given an impossible uh, puzzle. Um, so let's see. They're gonna try to. Seems like they're writing like a small like formatting uh, function. They're looping through like the x and y axes and and, and uh, printing uh, something. Um, so yeah. Um, Still unsure exactly where they're going with that, but let's see in here now they run it. So, so, oh, okay. so, so a quick update is both teams are taking this sort of wrong approach now and they're still looking for solves. So the hint they're both going to get is you can't win, you need to cheat. Right. Uh, which is uh, almost feel like there's some kind of deeper philosophical uh, thing. I here. mean, it's, it's a true life statement yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah let's, uh, um, yeah, I, I had a lot of thoughts about that, but let's not <laughs> go too, too off too topic. Too deep yeah. and too, yeah. Um, I, you know. So here's the other question. Do we want to give them a little bit more of a hint? Um, do we want to tell them exactly kind of how, uh, like, give them more of a hint as to what they want to change? No, I think we have time, right? No, no, we have time. Uh, let's do that. And, uh, yeah, in fact, well, that's too late now. Uh, I mean, I was thinking in, the t in terms of, like, since this is the last match of the day, we could have afforded, like, you know, extending the um, standard game time. But, yeah, but I don't know it's, if it's fair to do that once. Well, uh, we do it to the same two players. Either way, it's, it's only fair relative to each other. Because every match is different. Different challenges, different conditions. And so to some degree... Right, right. So um, you, you could argue that, it, that it's fair. But, but, but uh, let's see. You can't yeah. win. You need to cheat. You need memory corruption. Yes. Uh, it's dangerous to go alone. Like take this yeah, memory corruption. Take this, it's dangerous <laughs> to go alone. Take this memory corruption. I love it. Um, All right. Here goes the first tent. Yes. We'll see if this gets them on the right track again or if we need to. Uh, In the meantime, I'm trying to decipher what this uh, script is doing. They have a solve function there, which then will not really help them since you can't solve this. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's still like, you know, a little bit unclear where the players are in this. Unfortunately, we can't read the minds of the players. That would be uh, immensely helpful uh, when doing this type of commentary. We can just try to guess based on what we're seeing on the screen. So, and yeah, again, like if you have any uh, questions or comments from, from the, all of you watching this. I got uh, some smiles. I wish you all could have seen it, but there was like, oh yeah, uh, yeah of uh, course. Okay, okay. So yeah, they both, yeah. They yeah. were both, you know, going down the solver approach. So I, th I think we're going to see a lot more Ida now. Right. Uh, we're going to see them actually digging into the binary. Right. Uh, and, and follow it that way. So that's, that's, all, that's nice to, to hear that, like, the, the hint was uh, appropriately leveled and that it was uh, useful to the players. Yeah, I think they both, they both were at a, at a spot where it's going to help both of them. We'll see if either one starts to... Starts to uh, take advantage of that or not. Okay, yeah, so we're looking at check sec, we're looking at the binary properties, seeing is, you know, yes. and that's actually a great habit to be in too. I really yeah. think that a lot of people overlook that. Again, we saw that last one with the, with the Mallard, with the Ducks, where, yeah. uh, like, it not being randomized, uh, I think added a little bit extra slowdown there. Right, yes, it, definitely. Uh, because you so could have gone straight into, uh, you know. Yeah, this is, I, I, I think I, I have this as a 
pretty good habit. Like always run file, always run check sec. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It's kind of like when you're doing reversing, uh, uh, reversing uh, engineering challenges. Always run strings. strings. Always bin walk. Yeah. Just like. Just out of habit. Yeah. It's just like the things that you, things that you do. Right. All right. So let's let's watch this. Okay. So now, yeah. Now we're seeing them actually where we want them. Now they're back to reverse engineering. They're looking for vulnerabilities. Uh, and and what they're going to do is they're going to use the vulnerability to win. They're going to use the memory corruption uh, to get to 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 not code execution directly, right. but to the win state. So what they're going to do is they're going to need to corrupt in such a way that they can create a solved board. And they, they should hopefully still remember this, right? Because they know that the point was to win. They saw that. They saw the win. They saw the win state. They saw that's why they were trying to solve the puzzle. So I think they know that. Yeah. The question is, uh, are they going to uh, be able to figure out the memory corruption in time? So that's the question that we're and, looking for. And this is kind of interesting. I think uh, this type of pwnable, where like a lot of pwnables, you have kind of this like standard workflow where you try to uh, gain control of certain aspects of memory. Yeah, yeah. You're trying. It's, it's always it's a pointer overwrite or right. it's something that gets you a memory write. So you right. get a pointer overwrite. Like so do a rop chain. Do yeah. like you know. Um, but here you're just doing kind of like uh, maybe we would call it like a local memory corruption. You're yeah. just like or or it's it's not quite a logic vulnerability in that it is memory corruption, but yeah, it's exactly. not useful. It's not being used for control flow right. hijacking. You're using it specifically to just change the behavior change the of the state and change yeah. the behavior that yeah the, the functionality through its its normal legitimate means, but by entering a memory state that it didn't intend for you to enter. Right. So. In a lot of these cases, for example, like the program wouldn't crash, for example, with the, like if the exploit is like slightly. Yeah, wrong. you just you just fail to get a correct yeah. puzzle. It's just not solved, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is not to say that they couldn't crash no, no, with no, this no. vulnerability necessarily. Totally. It depends on how it's actually constructed. Yes. But there are there are certainly use cases, or there are cases where you know an exploit isn't actually exploitable in the in the co you know direct uh, code execution state. It is rather just. By exercising some other right. logical state of the program, and I think uh, in, in general, like what everything we say here about like the you know pwnables and, and like general ideas, there are a lot of like ifs and buts and stuff like to all of these and exceptions. But you know, we're trying to you know make some broad strokes here about different types of challenges. I'm a little nervous. This one feels like that we m the first one we might have to unleash a sudden death. I'm hoping we don't. Right. Um, uh, but I, and, and and I like the challenge because I you know like we're talking about. I think it, it has that that good twist mm, that yeah. you're gonna not get a a pointer overwrite, but you're gonna like you know influence the state of the binary. So I'm hoping. And we've got we've seen great work from all the teams so far. So we know we have high quality people. Uh, we'll see how it's going. This is also, I said, the, one of the larger binaries. We all get very small binaries, very, very self-contained. Yep. This was a little bigger. It's still, I think, small on the CTF scale of things, which in CTF is smaller than real-world binaries. Oh yeah. But relative to the live CTF binaries, this is this is larger than, than some of them. Yeah. Luckily, they don't have to like sift through a 300 megabyte uh, binary. Uh. What? <laughs> Who doesn't love? Yeah. Yeah. Sorting out uh, massive binaries. Yeah, I think I remember. Opening the Minecraft binary in IDA at some point. Uh, the, then I went to bed and uh, yeah, continued the day it's after. Still, yeah. yeah no, well, I, I think mean, it was like just barely finished, but it took like eight or nine hours to analyze that. Yeah, was, uh, big yeah. binary or even like obfuscated binaries can can take a long time to analyze for sure. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So let's look. We're seeing an int 64 ints. So, making sure the types are. Correct. That is a, that's that's good. I think I think uh, analyzing the types is useful. Although what I will say is that just looking at decompiled code is maybe not the best way to analyze any kind of type issues, right? No, I think it's like it's a good it's a good start to give you the big picture, uh, and uh, but then at some point you might have to drill down uh, on things. And I think this is also kind of interesting again with like different types of. Uh, Pwnable challenges, like uh, some pwnable challenges, like the bug is obvious and the exploitation is difficult. Absolutely. And then you have these more like reversing heavy pwnables, where like yep. you have to figure out like very complex data structure. But once you have kind of sorted everything out, the bug just like appears, uh, yeah. and and then from there it's typically not that hard. Or yes. Yeah. And I think our our previous examples, uh, several of our previous challenges, were more on the side of like it's obvious 
where the bug was, but actually landing it was, was sort of the tricky. Like, right. we just let you run syscalls. Yes. But which ones? That's the tricky part. Like, you actually, your, your payload, the execution. Same thing with, like, not coding. Like, we just ran your bytes, sort of. You had to, like, do that. It's, I think those are sort of, like, shell coding heavy and those sort of, like, constrained environments are some of my favorite challenges. Yep. Um, probably because I'm just bad at the, like, the more, uh, I don't want to say tedious, but the more in-depth, right. long-term reverse Complex, engineering. Uh, yeah. either rever so, I mean, I'm more of a reverse engineer myself, so like, yeah. I like those things, but then, for example, when you get to, to these like you know complex heap exploitation things, then I'm you know completely uh, you know out of luck there. Well, there's always just you know kind of familiarity and, and experience with it. One of the things I was going to mention, um, and and I say this that I don't do the re heavy, reversing heavy ones as an author of a reverse yeah. engineering tool. Well, maybe that's why you built the tool, right? But that, well, that's <laughs> also, also why I have coworkers who are much better than, than I am. That's the other. I highly recommend that approach. Um, so the but the, one of the things that I was going to comment on is that I like, one of the things that Ghidra I think really does well, that a lot of uh, um, uh, both Ida and Binja have actually changed as a result, is their side-by-side -side view. Having the synchronized side-by-side -side decompilation with this assembly, I think was a really important improvement in kind of like the standard workflow. And so now you'll see Ida and Binja both have much better split pane, synchronization, that, those kind of workflows, very much inspired, I mean, you know, we're, I assume Ilfac also was was inspired and was like, oh yeah, that's a, you know, yeah. I like the way the Gator does that too. But I certainly for from from Binja's perspective, like we definitely did that as well. Yeah. Um, so I do think it's it's good seeing difference. Oh, here we go. We've got. I uh, know oh, we don't. Is that the same? That's just the same screen. Um, but we are. So they're looking at libc, uh, uh, trying to download like the appropriate libc version, right? Yeah. So they're using this. Um, Web page where you can like put in uh, offsets for uh, different uh, functions to like uh, yeah, to match up yeah, with yeah like fingerprint yeah. Uh, the libc version and then download it. So uh, most of the times I think you need like two offsets and then it will match to uh, which version of libc is running. So again, when we're building these challenges, if we don't think they need libc we're not providing it now that's not true in all competitions though so no. you know they may not yes trust us yet right? i think this is like it is a convention among i would say like experienced uh organizers within this right because you, why make that it's an extra fun. tedious step yeah. that it's just it just mechanical and you just yes. go to the we all know about the website we all know how you would do however that. if you come up with a solution that's different than the intended one you might have a solution which does require absolutely, libc, and then you might go this absolutely. route anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. so it's it's not necessarily bad. It is just it should be a hint that maybe you're not taking the intended route. Right. Yeah. Doesn't mean I that agree. you're wrong, but you might be venturing into like unknown territory. All right. So let's be thinking about our next hint because, like I said, I'm a little concerned. We might need to do a different one. Yes. Um. Oh no. Triple tap control and get the uh, get the spoken dictation pop up. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. Oh, nope, nope, there's somebody else in the background excited about something. Yeah. I thought for a second we had a <laughs> surprise win off screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and check in with, uh, orga was it Organizers is, is Organizers. Organizers uh, is, is unfortunately yes. not being captured. Uh, uh, so we're kind of in the dark there. Uh, so I'm going to go see if I can get a little bit more of an insight. Hopefully we're making good progress there and I can come back with a little bit of an update. Yep. Um, and then maybe then go ahead with some hints then based on current status. Uh, so, uh, yeah, again, they're looking at, like, um, figuring out, like, libc versions or downloading, uh, like, an Ubuntu image. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, uh, but, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can manage to kind of, like, see what, what, in what direction they're going with, with this. Um, but, yeah, I... Uh, It's, it, it would be very interesting to see, like, if they have kind of figure out where uh, where this check function is going on. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have like the reference uh, solution, so I'm not like super familiar with like, exactly where it's where like where it's doing something incorrect. But um, yeah, it's uh, also going to be interesting to hear then what what the, what the organizers are up to if they have good progress. So we're also kind of a little bit in the in the dark uh, on that. But um, hopefully, um, 
we I think we are going to give them a hint that uh, I'd say uh, Jordan and uh, Ben are discussing a little bit, but what's the exact hint that we want to give them here to, to you know, uh, point them in the right direction. Uh, it's, yeah, well, you can see here in the uh, uh, lower, lower corner here, we have from time to time, we have uh, the organizer's screen like flickering in and out. Uh, unfortunately, that's the tech situation right now. And uh, in the meantime, I can give you a little bit of an update on the combined scoreboard for the for the DEFCON CTF. Uh, we have still like a fairly tight race. Uh, we have a span of about 18,000 points for the, the leaders, Katzebin, down to 14,000 uh, points for the team in 16th place. So definitely still like everyone is definitely still in the game uh with top three being katsubin uh mmm and perfect roots and they are all within like you know less than uh some percent or so uh, of each other so it's it's uh or maybe like 10 percent uh each other so yeah definitely a, a good uh good competition there uh, so um Sorry, Jordan, guys, Jordan yeah. is coming back here. So what's right. the status? What's so, the organizers doing? Uh, we're going to need some hints. They're, they're both still looking. I don't see any kind of progress. Right. So we're going we're gonna to drop a hint. Yes. Um, the hint that we're going to... There's a couple of hints we considered. One is, have you considered fuzzing? Because <laughs> literally just sending in a bunch of, a bunch of bytes will actually um, cause... Overwrite your, your, uh, your, your, your game state. Yes. All right. So that's the key thing that they need to figure out. That if they send in just a, a too big of a solution, it will actually corrupt the, the state, and they'll get weird boards, boards. And then it's a matter of, oh, okay, how do I now create a board that would be solvable? Right. So one that we considered, the other one was um, don't let yourself be boxed in to your solution. It's a Sudoku puzzle. That's a little probably more obscure. So yeah. um, I think we're going to go with just um, how, big, how, like, how big is your solution again, question mark? Or how yeah. many bytes is your solution, question mark? Um, as our as our next hint, and I think we're going to need to give them that because there's still some work to be done. Right. Um, and we want to to give them both a shot at getting it. Otherwise, we're going to go to our sudden death. So that's yes. the hint we're going to go with. In the meantime, we had a comment here from from Kigef. Uh, these seems interesting sea challenges. I think I will try them all, but I'm sure I would take a lot longer. Long. I would too. Yeah. So that's okay. But it, it is uh, like uh, a good idea. Uh, I mean, in, in general, for CTFs to like. Uh, try out challenges after they've been solved. Uh, normally for a lot of, of uh, CTFs, people publish uh, write-ups. So you can like try the challenges uh, that you didn't manage to solve uh, and then kind of use like a write-up or so as a, as a reference and then and guide your attempt as well to, to learn more. Um, I uh, think the idea is that we are releasing all the challenges. Uh, it might uh, take a few days for us to uh, recover from this uh, weekend. We have 15 matches, so Another 11 matches uh, to go after this one, uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we will definitely publish them, uh, and then uh, yeah, you can even like you know organize your own like mini uh, uh, tournament in your own uh, you know CTF team or uh, you know hacker space. Uh, uh, I know that I heard from before the competition that uh, Shellfish actually did some practice uh, for this tournament uh, by doing like a small. Uh, mini competition uh, of their own within the team, which and I think it, is really... it paid off. It, it, at least it, it appears did. it paid I mean, off those, was, as yeah. a, one of the winning teams. Yeah, we'll see how far they can go. Um, so uh, we have the hints prepared. Jordan is going to go and hand that off to the players. Uh, we are, what's the clock at? So we are, so, so 5.45. So we are 35 minutes into the game, which is mean that we are running uh, up like against the sudden death uh, clock here. Uh, let's see if they can manage to figure out this. On the other hand, this is also kind of a similar situation to the previous challenge where we were 35 minutes into the game and then uh, it kind of just like clicked for one of the players and they managed to go all the way. So uh, uh, it's going to be really exciting to see what's going on. Still a bit difficult to kind of like get a read on uh, Balson's progress or like their understanding of the they're kind of like looking at the code probably thinking very hard about you can see like the mouse moving around trying to build this mental model of what's what's going on you're like kind of like running the code in your head 
you know, what if this has this value, like how does it's, that it's propagate? It's probably the least interesting part of a live CTF, right? That's the only downside when you have a more reverse engineering heavy yes. challenge. Yes, uh, Is that you're just seeing people like maybe name stuff if you're lucky or add yeah. comments, but most of the time it's just looking at it. Right. Uh, and what we, you know, you know you're getting closer when you start seeing a crash and a debugger and a payload being written. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have it yet. I'm going to go ahead and keep an eye on uh, the organizers just briefly. Yeah. And see if we get any kind of that similar pro progress. Right, so we have, um, Oh, okay. okay, we did have a comment somebody else pointed out. Thank you for clarifying. Um, the reason that, that somebody was looking for the libc was to actually run it, because if you don't have the same VM uh, handy, you can't run that uh, libc. So you can just grab the libc from another another version uh, of Linux to be able to run the binary. So that is another, a completely valid reason that you might do that. Um, yes. Probably just easier to maybe look at a previous stream, or I, have we actually, I don't think we told people what platform that most of our challenges, all of our challenges were created on. That's actually a good note Yeah. So for future, for future things we should, because that's again, normal in a, in a CTF, happens all the time. You have to figure out the OS that it was created for, match version information and whatnot. Right. Not our intention to make that part of the challenge no. here. And it's the thing, it's like uh, Ubuntu 22 was re recent, somewhat recently went in like LTS uh, I mean, release and uh, a lot of people haven't uh, updated to that yet. Um, I. Uh, you know, I, I will accept like shared responsibility on this because like, you know, update your computers, people. Uh, but 2004, yeah. 2204 would probably be the Ubuntu, it's the most you know, common or Debian. Yeah. Uh, certainly it's it's frequently, but all right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the organizers, I'll be back and we'll see how it's going. Awesome. So um, I was talking about something um, when it comes to these challenges. Um, trying to get back on, on, on you know my train of thought there um, with uh, oh yes so you know uh, with this like uh, looking at another player looking at code trying to figure things out uh, a lot of times when I talk to people um, who are you know not experienced CTF players or don't know what CTFs are uh, you often get the question was like oh is this some kind of like eSports thing or like could you could you make this into some kind of like uh, esports thing, and to an extent, this is kind of what we're trying to do here. Uh, but of course, it, it has its shortcomings. That like some aspects of CTF um, is kind of like watching someone else take a maths exam. Uh, it's you know occasionally not the most exciting. So we're uh, really trying to by adding this commentary and trying to understand what the players are doing. We're trying to make this an interesting and educational experience for all of you. Um, viewers uh, there. Um, so I, I, I hope you uh, do uh, enjoy this and that you're going to have some takeaways and definitely check out the challenges uh, afterwards uh, to also kind of get, get a feel for uh, that's, you know, it might, some of these might seem simple, but when you're sitting here and actually trying to do it, you have to consider and take into account all these like small little details like if you just out off by one, like a small bit somewhere, like the whole thing uh, doesn't work, uh, you need to do all this troubleshooting, debugging. Uh, and uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like when you're writing exploits, you are essentially, it's like software development, but with your like hands tied behind your back, you don't get like all the nice tools and helps and error messages that you get like during normal software development uh, processes where, you know, you have all of these modern uh, tools to help you, but here you're kind of like, you're trying to bend something in, in, in a way that was not like intended to be used. You're messing with like a state of memory um, and so on. So it's, you really have like everything stacked uh, against you. And uh, that is like a big part of the challenge when doing these uh, ponables, these memory corruption uh, challenges. Um, looking here at the code here, we can see that uh, the Boston player is writing some small helper function here to send a number. Uh, maybe they're gonna try to, you know, use this to try to send a different num amount, different number of numbers, and uh, you know, see if they get a kind of any kind of reaction uh, out of that. Um, haven't really seen yet what. Oh, so now they're gonna send like a thousand zeros. That's that's interesting. Um, so we comment here like, yeah, it's unsolvable. Yeah, like the Sudoku itself is unsolvable. And that's kind of like the twist of this whole thing that, uh, you know, at face value, you just uh, solve the Sudoku and win, uh, but then it's it's unsolvable. So 
uh, yeah, that's kind of like the recap for, for people just recently tuning in. And speaking of recap, just to tell you again a little bit about what we're doing here. So we're here uh, in Vegas uh, on site at DEF CON. So organizing this live CDF as part of the um, official DEF CON CDF. So this is kind of like a sub event where all the 16 uh, participating teams uh, participate in this like single elimination knockout tournament where in each match uh, the teams send one player to go um, head to head uh, against the other team to be the first one to solve a uh, relatively simple uh, CTF uh, challenge. I mean, relatively is relative. Yes, yes, and that's. So, I, I really want to stress relative. And, and I want to be clear: I wouldn't personally solve half of the ones that we're fielding in the allotted time. Uh, I we you know tried some of them and it you know I could get them but maybe take a little bit a little bit longer. So uh, I have a lot of respect for these people. They're all very very good, and they're dealing with the pressure of being on camera. There's a crowd standing around them watching them. It is. Uh, it, oh, it can be. Cool. It can be pretty nerve wracking. So uh, I'm predicting. Oh, well, that is quite the visual effect there. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know uh, the. Photosensitivity warnings here. Uh, <laughs> I think it's only on our monitor. I don't see it on no, the stream. No, no, it's, it's, it's on, it's on stream as well. well. Yes, we have some yeah, so. glitching. Not sure what that's about. Uh, feels like our whole uh, infrastructure is slowly melting. Uh, so we no, will no, no, it's fine. It's stay with us. Wow, that is that is unusual. Yep. Um, Maybe we're getting hacked by the players, like through the HDMI cables. They're, they're playing the other game, the yes. other the other CTF yeah. challenge. I mean. We would you know. be lying if we would say that we did not have a discussion about like what shenanigans could the teams yeah, and, try to pull off and how we would yeah, yeah yeah measure against it or what we would do so doing that kind of like threat uh, threat analysis uh, or um, threat modeling uh, against yeah we have three more minutes we have wow. three more minutes wow. until it's gone it's been a very fast forty five minutes it's looking unlikely um, uh, that either one I did see some some debugger action yes. Um, I'm going to make one last pass. If we see somebody very close, so they're making progress, we might be able to give them just a little bit extra. But basically, we're about ready to deploy. Or if they obviously want to extend it, um, that's not a bad idea. We can both ask both. If they both say they want to extend it, we'll let them go because they're the last one. Yeah, and if, if so, the rules are: if one of them says they don't like they want to go sudden death, then we, we go, go sudden death. death. If that's both of exactly them want to extend right. it, then it's fine. Exactly right. I'll um, go see what they say. But yeah. ask them like, you know. Independent, like, you know, one, one on one, like, to not give any like pressure. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be cool to see a solution on this, and I think we do since we have been keeping up with the schedule, we do have that kind of time. But again, the uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to 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 say what the players want. Like, this is also kind of like a you know, kind of game theory thing. Like, do you want to go to sudden death or not? Like, it's a high risk uh, environment, right? When you're going to do this super fast. Do you think that you, because you also you don't know the progress of the other player? Like, do you think you have better progress than the other player in this challenge right now? And if you don't, do you think you have a better chance of beating them in the sudden death one versus catching up with them in the current challenge? It's uh, definitely not an easy uh, decision uh, to make by the players. So, uh, what's uh, what's the verdict? What do you think? Uh, what would you, if you're in their shoes? Oh no, I would say extend it. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. So we have a game here. Yeah. So uh, they, I'm I'm happy with this because yes. I don't want to change the rules yep. in a way that they're unhappy with. But yes. they both want to solve it. I, I mean, nobody wants to give up on a no, challenge. No, 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 no. That you've been working hard. That you started. You have a little bit of an idea. Right. I'm glad. I really want to see them see this through. Yes. We'll let them go. It's the last one of the day, so we're not running over anything else. Um, I'm actually kind of excited. No, 100. percent So. Uh, story related to that so i was playing in the qualifiers for the defcon uh, ctf with uh, our scandinavian uh, team norse code and i was basically sitting uh, all weekend with one challenge uh, so i mean I, I took breaks and met some friends and stuff but there was a lot of hours this uh, is paris challenge there was this was paris yeah. challenge it was the uh, crypto pawnable thing uh, so after i don't know if i spent uh, if, i don't remember if it was like 10 20 or 30 hours on this but regardless I uh, solved it like two minutes after the, the CTF ended. Yep. And that, uh, yeah. I mean, on, on the one hand, it's crushing, and on the other hand, though, you still solved it. Yeah. You still solved yes. it. And that's the thing. Like, when, when the time ran out, like I could have just stopped because, like, we're, it, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, we're not gonna get any points. But I, I was so close. I did want not want to stop there. Yep. Yeah.
So the only kind of like um, saving grace, for, or what you want to call it for that, was that in the end, solving that challenge or not would not have affected whether we qualified or not. That, that, that would have been crushing. That's yes. a little demoralizing. Yes, yeah, yes. when it would have been, it would have been the difference. Luckily, even yeah. if with those points, we wouldn't, we would have been just below the qualifying limits. Yeah. So. so at least, at least you had clarity there, there either way. Yeah, I, I was comfortable with that. That was fine. And also that means that, you know, I could, uh, uh, be part of this, uh, without having to like, uh, betray, uh, the, the team. Right. So, uh, yeah. All Turned right. Out okay. So, we are. There's a question here about uh, whether it was NCAT. No, it, this was the. Uh, it oh. was a crypto pwnable uh, challenge. Uh, was it was about like a function closure thing. Uh, C plus plus. We could go ask. Yeah, Perry. She's somewhere. So she was. She just was in the room. She just left. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've heard a number of people that that worked on that. It uh, was a great challenge. Like yeah. I, I I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but it was tough. Okay, so. We, we don't have a hard time limit now. Now it's basically, we're just going to let it go until either we are convinced it's going to take way too long or, yep. uh, you know, we're, we'll, 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 we'll see at this point. But they both want to keep going. I would love for one of them to get it. It not only means we get to save one of our sudden deaths, um, but I think it's just way more fulfilling for them and for the audience to see kind of like the, yes. the, yes. Hard, one, the hard one solved. So we're looking forward to it. Um, it is interesting that we've got Rop Gadget address just kind of coming out. I, it looks like it looks like a template. I think that this existed because yeah, hopefully I, they have an idea that that is. But we are seeing like one. someone is writing something very deliberate here, right? This is like a pr to print out the board somehow. But um, let's see, they are trying to see. I mean, this this like double loop there is to print out some states, but the, that part above. You see something where they're like cutting off. They're swapping. All right. Oh, is this just to generate valid generate a, a uh, solution that they? I mean, they I want. would just search the internet for solve Sudoku board and copy and paste it. But but if that is what they're doing, that would that would be valid too. Right. So uh, the idea is that you want to kind of like overflow and stuff to like basically insert to modify the state into something that's either solvable or already solved uh, and uh, so they, they need to have that okay so we're seeing we're seeing interesting we're seeing calculations we're mm. seeing uh, length calculations uh, unfortunately I was hoping we get some more uh, video from the new organizer up oh, it came in briefly yes with some debugger output there right yeah um, yeah we'll, we'll leave it up for a second and just kind of show them both and we might be able to see a little bit yeah yeah see there it's coming on Man, that's tantalizing. That's so mm. mean. Yeah. This this cable is has been. Yeah, we might have to uh, do some shopping. Oh, there is definitely a shopping run tonight. Yes. So we, we should be able to have this solved uh, and out of the way, and that way we got a long day, eight hours tomorrow of hopefully uninterrupted stream. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if that if that turns out to be the case. I mean, given that it's only been, we swapped out the capture card, the USB C cable. The HDMI is the only thing we haven't swapped out, but it's been that same side of the table consistently. Yes. That's been having these problems. Yeah. Makes me think that yeah, we've just got a an HDMI cable that is suspicious. Uh, so we'll yeah. see if we can we, we can get that going. All right. Um, actually, let me. I'm gonna go ahead and do another in-person look. I'm yes. gonna go ahead and take a look at new organizers. And um, we'll be back with an update shortly because I debugger is generally a good sign. Yes. I saw. This one oh in wait. Ooh. Uh oh. Uh, I saw like a bin bash string in the debugger there somehow. But that doesn't really make sense, right? Because there's well, really, uh, I mean, with the intended solution, that doesn't mean they're not going to do. Oh no, yeah. And there uh, also is the. So I, I'm trying to remember how the win function runs. It may just show. It may be from the win function on the stack as well too. I don't remember, but no, they shouldn't be getting to that. Yes. Let's see. I don't see the. In, in the meantime, I wanted to take like the like just ask people who are uh, watching whether you are like uh, any, is anyone here in uh, in Vegas attending DefCon or are you, are you watching from uh, all over the world? Like, who do we have here? I think we saw someone chat? from Kenya even uh, chimed in earlier. Oh and wow! Said that they were watching, so we know yeah. we do have yeah uh, some worldwide it's watchers. It's be interesting to go and see those uh, like analytics afterwards. See uh, who's watching. Um, but yeah, it's um, do we have any people? So and. By the way, like if you are um, if you are here at DefCon, uh, 
you know, feel free to come by in the, the CTF uh, area. Uh, we probably know. won't be able to talk a, a ton, but uh, hopefully yeah, we get like some if breaks. You come, if you come during matches, you can watch the matches. If you come between matches, uh, you yeah. can, uh, you know, have a chat with uh, us, hopefully, uh, if we're not panicking. Uh, yeah, someone's watching from the CTF floor. Okay, nice. And also from Europe in the hotel room giving your feet a break. Yeah, that's a wise decision, I I'm, think. I'm ready for my, my feet, my throat. Like several parts of me need a break. Oh yeah, point. yeah. I mean, we we've been talking here for like okay. So there's several hours this now. is interesting. These these uh, there's ASCII values are being converted to integers on, on this. So we we we're looking at debugger dump of the game state, mm, nice, right? So nice. we can see, we do see the the game state. The zero, you know, it's really obvious to see those those numbers. Cool. Um. Yeah, and you can see. Uh, Look at that base uh, thing there. You have like generating a list of integers from zero to ninety-six, which is interesting. Is that, uh, yeah, we have watchers from Estonia, Brazil, people who are saying they they want to go visit DefCon in the future. Yeah, I think uh, DefCon is like it's a cool event to to visit. It's. Uh, I, I think they're trying to increase the amount of streaming and online presence as well too. So you probably will be able to find other. Streams. I think there's even some webcam, like 360 degree webcam, virtual cameras are putting up in a couple of the rooms where you can watch what's going on. So, yeah. trying to improve like the, the accessibility. I mean, I'm certainly with with COVID, in general, most conferences have tried to adapt better for. Oh, okay, we have somebody watching right next to our camera. Let's right. hope they don't bump it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, again, checking the code here they're writing. Um, I'm trying to get a better feel for what they're doing. Like. Again, they're generating like a list of numbers. Uh, okay. Oh, so they need to find like the right uh, offset this, for their overflow. This, like, this actually looks really good. Yes. This actually does look like, really good. I'm because, glad like, we let them go. Because once they finish this. Yeah, yeah. If they get the right offsets. Like, let it, me go it, look at the other one, yeah, but we yeah. might be closing in. Yes. So that's that's really cool. Like we can like it, once they get that thing, it's gonna be real quick. Like we are probably gonna miss. Uh, there's a big risk we're gonna miss like the moment, but so basically, if I'm reading this correctly, what I'm trying to do is like find the offset in memory, like they're overflowing something, and then like how far into this do they want to put uh, whatever they are placing there, which should be the the solved or solvable uh, state. Um, so uh, yeah, they they might definitely onto something. They're switching the numbers around a little bit. Maybe it's that they so they switch the zeros to a one, uh, which seemed to have crashed the program, and then then checking why this is happening. Um, yeah, we have someone from Morocco as well. Cool. Uh, that's uh, it's, it's cool to see we have people all over. Uh, I guess the uh, I'm trying to like work out like what what time it is across the world at the moment. Uh, but uh, wait, but the people are watching from Europe. It's like in the middle of the night there. Uh, so that's uh, dedication. I uh, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I'm trying to see here that they're just quickly looking at the disassembly again. Uh, trying to maybe looking for some specific offsets or so. Um, yes, they did get some specific offset, offset to, to put a breakpoint uh, there, right? And then they're also looking at the base. Um, oh, yeah, to make the breakpoint in the correct. Or maybe not the breakpoint or the, um, the the offset where to inspect the memory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, people saying they're watching from like, yeah, definitely middle of the night. Um, you know, uh, Awesome, Netherlands represented as well. So, I, I'm seeing some interesting stuff there. But uh, what did you see uh, uh, from, from the organizers? organizers? From, from the organizers? Yeah. So the, I, I mean, I hate to take bets. Yeah. Because I've lost a lot of money at this table so far. <laughs> if it, if, uh, if, uh, if this was a, a gambling arrangement, I would I would not be doing so well. But I will. I, I feel also feel like I tend to favor my side of the table. Yeah. And then we've had all these surprise victories from the other ones yeah. uh, pop up several times. But all that said, I do think Team Taiwan has a little bit of a leap. So looking at the new organizers, we've got a script. Uh, it has a bunch of it's some it's a mixture of GDB, some pwn tools, and then as well as you know sending inputs and kind of breaking in. I didn't get the sense that they they had the, 
an overall plan for what to do. Right. But again, I, the, definitely the one thing I've learned is that I don't know what I'm doing anyways. Like it's, it is really hard to understand exactly what's going on in their heads and so you're not always right. Um, whereas I will say, it certainly looks like with that offset, right, that we were seeing a, a, a valid solved Sudoku trying to find the right offset to line it up, which sounds like from what I understand of it is, is the intended solution. Um, so, We'll see. Yep. It's, uh... Can we can we get some some confirmation? Is the the solution? If is it just misaligning the correct board, a certain number of bytes, will that trigger it essentially? Any correct board at the right offset. So just put the right amount of padding bytes in, and then it will overwrite it the right. Say again. Yep. Uh, then you mark it as salt, yeah. Oh, just send anything and it will just mark it as salt. Right. Okay. So what uh, our producer there said was that uh, you first you send uh, uh, a solvable uh, state. You overwrite the um, the thing, the state with the solvable one, and then you just send something to like trigger the recheck and, and like have it be uh, solved, and then you get the win uh, there. Um, and we can see here they are like working out in a text editor. I think yeah, like, it still looks like they're trying to solve the state as it exists, not overwrite the the state with their solve like so what i saw oh. i wonder I'm, I'm a little afraid they got the overwrite but if their exploit didn't try to like send another round for validation it like overwrote it but then never oh oh wow that would be uh that would be terrible time. um so it is possible that they essentially had the right solution no mm, uh, that's painful. just didn't re-trigger it to be able to actually get to the win function mm. um so we will we will see. Uh, we're only a little bit late, especially actually we technically we have two more minutes before the original length of this, right. uh, and we're letting it run long just because of the the, the last one of the day, um, and we prefer they have a chance to do it if they can. But there will our voices will give out, and there will be some point which we say, yeah. sorry we're cutting you off, uh, but none of us want that to happen. So so we'll see. Yeah, we're taking a, we're taking a bet here and uh, hoping this will work. Um, We're also about to lose power on our, our chat. Yes. Tunisia, excellent, welcome. Yeah, I've been to Tunisia for a CTF competition. Have you really? I actually, I think I got invited to speak there one time at a conference and yeah. oh, there we go. Um, so. Uh, Let's see if that actually powers it. I don't know what this is plugged into at this point. Yeah, yeah power, we have there power we go. on our, one of our screens here. That's All right, good. good. And that uh, we also have like a graphical glitch on the Balsam screen. But it's just it's just blocking the ads, so I'm okay with it. That sounds great. That's okay, I wish right. I wish all of my graphics glitches just blocked out ads as I surfed. Oh on yeah. The web. So uh, as an employee of a big ad tech uh, company, I will have to uh, <laughs> a, a large tech uh, company <laughs> whose revenue might depend heavily on ad. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Are, yeah. Are you allowed to run ad blockers? Nah, I'm not gonna make you talk at work. I'm not gonna make you talk at work. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm not gonna do that. All right. So here we go. So I s this still feels like we're trying to solve it. I don't. I don't see. I don't see the the um, the exploit. Like I don't see them actually like exploiting it. Well, I mean, this might still work. Like if their idea is to just like overwrite a couple of values sure. and then make it solvable and then well, put it into solution. Like, but it's they're not gonna a fast solution. They're but gonna like, inherently have to overwrite the whole thing though, right? Because they're just linearly overwriting well, it. Well, I mean, it might be that they think that they can only overwrite like the beginning of it or something like this. It's still gonna have a null at the end. So no, no, well, no, no, not necessarily. Because it's gonna convert in red. Yeah, no, that's, okay, that's fair. I mean, it could, it could work. Like it's not the, not, not the intended play, but uh, it could probably work. So, yeah. Unless there's a question mark at the very end of the puzzle. If there's an unallocated one at the very end, that would have to be, well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. All right. 
<laughs> few more, few, few more bits. Thanks everybody for hanging with us. This has been like just utterly exhausting and super exciting. Um, just as a quick recap, you know, from our from our earlier games, we had uh, a nail biter of a finish at the very beginning from uh, Shellfish versus PTB WTL. Oh yeah, like they were. I think within a few keystrokes of each other, yeah. like you can't get a tighter match. Like I know. we were looking at one screen as they about were about to declare a winner. Yeah, and then the other one won. Like, it popped. It just was so quick. Yeah, so that was fantastic. Make sure you go back and check the uh, the replay on that one. Uh, we're yeah. gonna end the stream today when we're we're done with this particular challenge. Um, oops, sorry about that. I hit the microphone. Uh, we're gonna end the stream today uh, once we're we're done with this challenge, and, and we wrap it up. But uh, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow, a long day tomorrow. So the stream is going to run for eight hours straight. Uh, actually, I guess nine at least because we've got eight challenge. No, no, that's right. Eight, it's, eight total it's, hours. It's eight Each hours. one's a one-hour thing. Yeah. We'll see. We may end up needing a break. Well, we're going to try to get breaks by taking trading off. You're going to see some guest uh, commentators. We're going to have some other people come in and fill out yeah. uh, different roles. Should we? Uh, I think it was already written on Twitter, but the the idea is to have uh, we have a, a, a live overflow, uh, yeah. hopefully joining in. And uh, Camoso, yep. uh, Brandon Falk. Uh, yep. So two uh, popular uh, people in like the uh, security, uh, like content creation uh, space. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ex excited. Uh, looking forward to uh, to chatting with both of them. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to have a break. And as we each get to, yes. maybe maybe alternate uh, every other round. So one of us will will we we'll get to take a rest. And also. Uh, make sure we give our producer Glenn uh, a break as well. So yeah, we'll be cycling through that. Um, we've got uh, a variety of different challenges. Um, maybe for any of the teams that happen to be listening, we want to talk about like the overall types of challenges that we have. No, no, no super spoilers, but like I will say, I think we're pretty representative. Right, right. There we've is seen a uh, heavy pwn focus, a little yes. bit of re. Yes. There's. Um, uh, certainly, a little bit like shell coding or constrained exploitation. Um, solution. Just having a quick look here again. Yeah, trying to get caught back up. Yo. Oh man. So I they have a solution there, right? So they, they're solve script. This is, I mean, it's, they have a solve solution, but. Yeah. There is a hashtag free Jordan, Glenn, and Kala uh, in yes. the chat. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, just to clarify, that's my uh, nickname or like, uh, and then, so, yeah. Uh, in, in, in the chat. Pack harder. Thank you. Yes. I mean, if uh, thank you, uh, Negasora, this random person who showed up in our chat. <laughs> Certainly not the author of this particular challenge that has uh, stymied our opponents for so long. So. Right. Yeah. He, but but uh, you're not wrong. It, if they just would hack harder, we could we could take a break and we could. Yeah. Uh, we could get just. some dinner. So uh, let's let us consider. It is. I would say we are going to have to hit sudden death pretty soon because we're looking at another several minutes of sudden death as well. So, um, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll we'll take a look. Maybe I'll take one more pass at new organizers. We'll talk about having a uh, you know queuing up a sudden death. We'll kind of consider what we want to go. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and give a bit of a oh just use a data glove. That's a what that's is a data glove? That's a reference I don't get. Uh, isn't that the uh, the the game controller thing. The, no, that's, no, that's a power, the power glove. That's a power, that's power glove. glove. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the child yes. of the 80s, of course. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, yes. Wait, that's like Sam, from before Sam, I was born. Sam, no trolling. No trolling. Please, please stay. No, yeah, stay no, 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 no. Uh, no. Yeah, we, we will. We will find you. You're in the room. <laughs> yeah, we remember yeah. this. No, yeah, we don't. We don't talk like that. That's. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't use it. Yeah. Next, you're going to be asking for for network forensics or something. Something yeah. crazy. Yeah. We might call the goons. Yeah. Uh, I'd have them take you out of the room. Yeah. All right. I'll go check out new organizers and we'll be back. I'll give an update on the. DEFCON CTF scoreboard uh, in the meantime. Um, so we uh, have like a slightly larger spread now uh, with uh, like spanning from just a below 14,000 up to uh, just above 18,000 points between the 16th and the first uh, place with uh, Katsubin in first place, MMM in second place and Perfect Root in third place. And if I'm not misremembering, I think uh, last year we did have like a top fight between Katsubin and uh, PPP as well. They have kind of pulled ahead those two teams and created like a slight gap down to third place. So uh, I do think this uh, like mirrors uh, some of what we saw last year uh, with, with uh, regards to like the standings. But 
this is only the first day of the DEFCON CTF. A lot of stuff can happen. Uh, this is like far from over. Uh, so we, we're gonna be keeping uh, an eye on that um, throughout the weekend and give you updates. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're here in the, the CTF room, you can see this really uh, funny uh, visualization that the Nautilus Institute has put up. It's like some 3D uh, animation of like a bunch of weird uh, uh, machines, uh, one for each team, like spitting random objects at the other teams, like showing, I guess it's showing like who is attacking whom. Uh, possibly there's like seashells and stuff uh, flying around. Uh, you know, I guess there's some joke about there about like shells and seashells and you know that. Um, but again, taking a look at um, the um, screen of Balson here, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure. We, they have this like partial solution or like a solution. They have split up the solution into two parts and then um, trying to send some, like they're sending some data and then they're sending the other solution. Still not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, so we have explanation data handle crazy keyboards. Yeah, I will have to look that up uh, afterwards. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I still think uh, I'm still thinking power gloves would uh, you know really help out in this situation. Uh, maybe you could have them like uh, you know different like uh, rock gadgets and stuff mapped to the uh, different buttons and stuff. That's uh, you know the way to go. Anyway, you can see uh, them like in the debugger here, inspecting the memory there a little bit. Uh, so I'm looking at the global variables. You can see you have the standard in the standard out uh, object, and then further down, they have these objects. And you can see you can the byte values there uh, in the like the middle of the of the printed out block uh, with the different digits of the Sudoku solution. Um, yeah, it, it, it like it feels like they are very close to, to getting it, but still like a bit unsure exactly what's going on. Um, so uh, yeah, we have uh, Jordan coming back here now. So uh, we'll get an update on, on, on where right. we are. We are going to give them a sudden death hint. We're going to give them a hint that is just because here's here's the, the thing that we have missed talking about it so far. I was looking back over with the, the example solution and the, 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 the nuance here is that there's a length check that that we've been that has been kind of showing up a little bit now. Length check basically um, prevents you from even if you overwrite it with a fully solved board from actually solving it on that throw. Okay. So you overwrite the state of the board all but the last one. Right. And the last one you leave empty, and then you can just solve it by overwriting the correct last answer. I see. So it's a little bit along the lines what we've been talking about, but it seems that they've done like a weaker variant of that where. Uh, it, it, they didn't have like as good of a solution. Uh, there was a question chat here about uh, is there anywhere that explains the CTF format? There's an AD going on as well as these one ones. Yes. So, kind of like the main uh, the main CTF, the DEFCON CTF, is the uh, traditional uh, DEFCON attack defense uh, that you know we all know and love. Uh, although you know there've been like variants and twists to it uh, over the years. Um, and then. Within this competition, this live CTF is like a sub event where uh, it's running parallel to the attack defense uh, aspect of this. So each team sends uh, one player for each match, and then we play this uh, knockout tournament. And at the end, this will ge uh, generate a ranking from the knockout tournament, which is then fed back in and will uh, affect the scores of the main CTF uh, event. So uh, this will be valuable and might definitely affect the final standings of the DEFCON CTF. I'm not completely aware of like what's like the weighting factor is like how the scoring model works for for the um, CTF. Um, and uh, so, so I, I couldn't tell you like exactly how valuable it is to win the tournament versus getting second place. But we've been trying to find a balance where uh, the teams can definitely I have, so I'll tell it. you in a second, but yes. uh, first I'm going to go ahead and deliver the hints and I'll be right back and we'll see if we can we can bring this one home. Right, can you just read me the hints here first? Here we go. First so, attempt, overwrite almost all. Second attempt solves due to length check. Yes, sounds great. This is great. the hints and we will see if this does it. Yeah, this is almost like a straight up 
solution. Like, yeah. This could almost well, be like a write-up for the, you know. It, you have to understand what the program does, and that, oh, that's oh. the state that they've, they've got. Yeah, yeah, but they have that. Yes. Like. So now we're going to give them, like, the, the final, hopefully final hint here that will just, like, hopefully blow this case wide open and, uh, you know, may have them solve it from there. Uh, did we get any uh, reaction from the players on that? I was too busy coming back. I should have I should have watched. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, we got, we, we got some forehead touching. Okay. Uh, says, says our producer. Yes. Um, so we'll see. Will it? I, I, I think this was, a, this one I think is on us. Yeah. I think this was a little too subtle for what we're kind of aiming for. And again, being in a high pressure thing, it's just not to say that these are not excellent exploiters. It is just very hard. And there's, this was a little bit of a little bit nuance, a little subtle nuance. Oh, yeah. Because I... of the, the way that the length check happens in the binary, you can't actually fully overwrite and expect it to do it. It will already know that it's an invalid attempt. Mm. And so it's not solvable. But then you have overwritten the, the correct state such that you can then solve it because you moved it from an insolvable state to right. a solvable state. Right. And, Somebody else might have got it. You don't know, but it's definitely this is definitely a little harder. It's certainly, it's it's more subtle than some of our previous challenges. Yes. Um, but but we'll see. We'll we'll do our best to keep keep dialing in the, the difficulty and see how it goes. So let's keep an eye out for the the winner. We may see because we're not looking at the new organizers. Uh, we might get that uh, off screen, uh, or we might see Team Taiwan pull it off here uh, in the main window. So I'm. I'm I keep rooting for, for whoever we have the capture card working on, just by very nature of being on my side of the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but. But, you know, like, uh, being a uh, Swiss, not citizen, but Swiss resident, I'm, you know, kind of like uh, maybe rooting for organizers a little bit. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, are, yeah. are they uh, are they a Swiss team? So they Swiss? are a Swiss-British-American team, okay. I think. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. So there, you know. We have the winner. Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome, awesome. Uh, oh my god. Down to the end. Down to the it end. It happened again. It happened right. again. So I'm gonna go you can go congratulate just, them, go talk to the team. I'm gonna go ahead and see see y'all out. Uh, just a quick summary. I think we've already kind of covered what's what's happening the rest of the day. We're gonna go recuperate. We're gonna fix our HDMI cable, so we'll come back with uh, tomorrow. We'll uh, hopefully have uh, the ability to see both screens more effectively uh, instead of having the, the flickering that we had this time. And uh, we look forward to seeing eight challenges. We're going to eight more rounds. We're going to finish up in the morning, four more rounds of round one. And then in the afternoon, we're going to move straight into round two. And we're going to go all the way from eight teams all the way down to four by the end of tomorrow. So come back and uh, see that long day. Look forward to seeing you then. Take care and have a good one.